Yo! Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in. The most underrated podcast you already know. Hell yeah! Broadcasting from most underrated studios. I am your man, Thomas the Franchise. Flying solo today. Starting out with this one. This is Jay-Z from the Glastonbury Festival. From, uh, shit, I want to say... Let me see if I got a date on this bitch. 2008. Oh my gosh, I'm old. I thought this shit was so dope. I actually did something similar to this. At uh, my homie Vitzer's wedding. Him and his lady got married and uh, I wrote a song to Wonderwall, remade the beat, chopped it up, and kind of did a little rap for them. So I've known them forever. And uh, yeah, it was really cool, man. It was a very memorable moment of the wedding. I still get people hitting me up randomly, sending me like video clips and shit of that. It was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. There we go. You're gonna be the one that... What up, chat? What are you pretty motherfuckers doing? We're gonna be a lot of cussing on this show. I don't, this is not gonna be a regular show, man. We can do whatever the hell we want in here. I might fire up some weed in a second. Don't care about Dow. Don't care about the people that run the building. Don't care about my neighbors in here. Don't care about nothing. I'm gonna do my thing. If you don't like it, don't have me here. That's how we doing it. What up, y'all? Happy birthday to Jay-Z, December 4th. Sean Carter, man. Is it Jay-Z's birthday or what? That shit gets me fired up. I was in a little bit of a... Oh, shit, is my audio fucked? God damn it. I just got one thing to say. Don't say anything until I fix the audio. Hmm. Audio mixer. There we go. I'm sorry. Let me just restart this shit so I can trim all that bullshit out. I love producing my own show. It's so fun. Y'all, what up, fools? What is going down? Welcome in. Most Underrated Podcast, you already know. Broadcasting from Most Underrated Studios. I'm your man, Thomas the Franchise, flying solo dolo. I fucked up the intro. I left all the audio on. Everything was messed up. I'm sorry. I'll take that L. Take that L on the way out. But I'm going to trim it out on the other side. This is uh, Jay-Z, obviously. We're opening with Jay-Z. did this at the Glastonbury Festival 2008 over Wonderwall. And I was just saying in the intro, I did something similar. I had a, my homie Vitzer, one of my best friends, got married. And him and his lady, um, at their wedding, I remade this beat and like wrote a little song over Wonderwall and rapped it and performed it at the show. And then everyone kind of sang along on the chorus. And it was super, super sick. And uh, yeah, this just, this song will always remind me of that. And um, I wanted to open with this one today for Jay-Z, man. Happy birthday, ho. December 4th, Sean Carter. Back up on the chorus, probably get clipped. We don't give a shit. What up, chat? How you guys doing today, man? Thank you for letting me know that uh, I had a little bit of echo going on. Got quite a show for you guys today. On the solo tip. Uh, still going to do some sneakers. I, we have a ton of packages in here. I don't think we're going to open all this because Dal Palantonio loves packages and it was his birthday a couple days ago and I don't want to do that to him. So I'm going to let him open these packages. I know on the very bottom is my uh, Fire Red 4s. In this middle box, this is from the homie Adam EB. I don't know exactly what's in there, so we'll open that on Monday. In the back box on the other side, that's a pair of uh, Brian Shima Razor Skates. Brian Shima is a legend in the rollerblading game from the early 2000s. And uh, they reissued a 20-year anniversary. They re reissued his Razor skates. And those skates were the very first skates I was ever able to buy, like big time, like good quality skates with my own money. Everything I had had from that point on, I, I got some uh, hand-me-downs. And then I had some, some joints I copped at a pawn shop. 
And that shit was, uh, it was cool, but it got me by, but it was nothing like those right there. So I don't know if I'm going to open those on the show. It's just kind of a personal pickup. Shima won Razors, uh, but I just got the gods, so I don't think I need both pairs. So I'm going to either sell them or just return them. I don't know. I got swept up in the nostalgia. I think they're already sold out or close to sold out, though. So maybe they'll have some resale value. I don't know. But that's what's going on with the packages. These three boxes here, some Zoom Air Jordan 1s. Uh, we're going to be doing, I'm going to show you guys the Bayou Boys. And then I want to also do a comparison on the Zoom Air Jordan 1s because there's some stuff I noticed that is definitely different. For better or for worse, I'm not sure yet. I haven't worn the Bayou Boys around more than just in the crib, kind of walking around a few time, a, a few steps, but they're not the same, bro. They're not the same. Uh, not only the $150 price tag versus, what are these joints, $175? Versus 175 on the other Zoom Airs or some of the other Zoom Airs that come out. Obviously, box is different. Packaging is different. I think the colorway on the Bayou Boys is super sick. I like the Croc skin, all that stuff. The insole is really dope. There's a lot of dope detailing. Three sets of laces. Like, very good shoe for $150. Very sick Jordan 1. Colorway, dope. Material, I like all of it. There's just some differences on the shoe. And I'm going to explain those differences to you guys as soon as... Uh, Later on, as soon as we go into sneakers. So we'll get into that. We'll have some heaters for you on the show. And we'll have some, uh, let's see, we'll do some underrated news, some heaters. Uncle Jim, I think, is going to call in. I'm going to try to get Uncle Jim on the phone because we went 5-0 and o together last week. So I'm going to try to have him call in and run it back, see if we can pick like three games each is what I'm shooting for. Uh, but I just really want to give you guys winners. I don't really care about how many games. I just want to give you guys winners. I've been crushing it in my personal shit, so I just want to – I want to pass that along, man. I don't want to um, give you guys losing plays on the show. Like, my heaters are all L's, and then I'm, I'm killing it in, in the personal shit. So uh, I'll give out some college football plays for today. You guys can take that. I've been crushing college football. Some college basketball should be fun. Uh, in the chat, where is Dow? Jay Rio, Andre M, Invisa Dow. Any other comments about Dal? I think everyone else probably knows. Uh, yeah, Dal's off. Dal works on Fridays for one. And so normally we do the show on Thursdays. But Dal wanted a couple because of the coronavirus or, you know, him and his lady, whatever. He, I had Edgar in here. I had Uncle Roselli in here. He, he wanted me off or he wanted to be off for Thanksgiving. So, uh, or after Thanksgiving, he was like, hey, because I, I went to visit my family for Thanksgiving. So he wanted to do like a little quarantine thing. Um, I didn't do a very good job at that because I'm just trying to continue to do the show. So I brought in uh, Uncle Roselli on Black Friday. That's not very quarantine. Then the following show, I brought in Ed on Monday. That's not very quarantine. So then Dow was trying, Dow was thinking maybe he can come back today or Monday. Well, since I brought in Ed on Monday, he's like, he, I'm not coming back on Thursday. So I think Dow will be back on Monday. He doesn't, um, that's outside, of, like, not on uh, the work schedule. And so, yeah, that's what's going on. That's where he's at. He's working today. And then, you know, he kind of wanted some uh, studio quarantine or whatever. What am I listening to right now? Empire State of Mind live. All right, I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. It's Hove's birthday. Happy birthday to my, uh, I was going to say my guy, Jay-Z. He's not really my guy, but he is kind of my guy. Happy birthday to Jigga. Jason Ramirez, I've not seen those. But I like the box and it's pretty fire. Dude, the packaging is so dope. I can't wait to show you guys the packaging, show you how they all look. For all of you that have not seen them, there are just some differences that I'm confused on. And maybe you guys can help me because I'm a moron, bro. I'm not the smartest guy in the sneaker game. I don't know if you noticed. So maybe you guys can help me out. But there's just some things that I'm seeing that are different. And I own two other pairs of Zoom Air Jordan 1s. And other than the 175 price tag on the others versus 150 on these, there's other differences as well. And this is the better packaging, though. This is way better packaging. Materials on this shoe are way better. It's just interesting that they're 150 versus 175 on the others, and you get the OG box and all that shit on the others. So, yeah. I mean, you know, is what it is. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Thank you guys for coming in and supporting the kids solo. Ascent Eyes, John King, my man Chris Barry, Souls on my feet, Stanny B, uh, Jason Ramirez, Martin Benitez. What up, bro? Where's my boy Dow? There you go. I just, I just laid it out for you. Uh, Al Baroon, Jason Ramirez. Did I say John King? 
Hat to her. Dow 99% recovery rate, dog. Neighborhood. Hey, we were kind of talking about it, and uh, we were going back and forth, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to criticize like you or whatever. I, I just, I don't have the energy to... Like, I, I'm just trying to worry about myself. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to worry about what I'm trying to do. Everyone's trying to worry about what everyone else is trying to do. And everyone's circumstances are different. Everyone's situation's different. If there's no game plan from the nation, if we're not getting a game plan from a leader that everyone's supposed to follow for the betterment of everyone, like, whatever. I'm just going to continue to do my thing. And we haven't had that game plan since since March. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It's just hard. How do you how do you follow? Some, how do you tell people what to do, or how do you judge people on what they're doing or how they're handling the pandemic or the virus when you're not in their situation? You don't have the same situation as them. For one, for number two, we don't all have a uniform plan. There's nothing. What are you criticizing? Them doing what they want to do. Like, we don't all have somewhere one uniform thing to do. So, whatever. It just is what it is. I don't know how to say it, bro. It's is it, it's K A S Z Brown. Is it Kaz? Is it just Kaz Brown? It's got to be, right? Dude, love the show. Been following for a while. Missed the sneaker reviews or just or have n just not been getting the reviews. No, I haven't really been doing them. We've just been doing them on the show, bro. I haven't been doing like detailed uh, hardcore sneaker reviews for a hot minute. So now you haven't, you haven't missed anything. I thought about it. If I wasn't going to do a show today, I thought about dropping a show and just doing these boxes but or doing these uh, Zoom airs, doing the comparison for you guys and everything there, but... It's all good. I think, look at this, bro. Look what your boy did. Check out that fire. Check out that fire. What up, kid? Right in front of me. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do, be the cam. I'm gonna show you guys the, uh, the uh, sneakers on. That way you can see the detailing and see exactly what I'm talking about. We still got the OG cam over there. It's funny, because I thought I broke this camera that I'm pointing at now. Last show, the homie Ed was in here, and I went to like go take him, uh, go take it to him, and it slipped out of my hand, fell on this hard table and the screen was just blacked out or no the screen was all fuzzy the screen was just shit i was like oh there we go uh that's an l we're gonna go only have two cameras now i'm gonna have to figure out a way to get a third camera but i turned it off and i turned it back on that day and it like the screen came a, it was a little bit better you could actually touch it before the touch screen wasn't even working now these shits are uh or i i, I turned it off left it here you know since the last show i came in today turned it on quality shit's fire Working just fine, as you saw. No big, oh, that's not the one. That one's there. That one's there. And then the main cam. So, whatever. Shit's going all right. Shit's going all right. Kaz Brown, you had the best Jordan 1 off-white UNC review. Bro, that was a comparison of real versus fake. Oh, my gosh. I almost wish I never would have done that. It's the most viewed uh, video on the channel. Close to half a mil now. And I just get, my social media gets wrecked because of that video. The amount of people I have DMing me to legit check their pairs or ask me questions about the UNC off-white. And the funny thing is, <laughs> the, I don't even have them. Like, I don't even have them anymore. I can't even tell you anything. Yeah. They don't know that, though. I mean, they just found me for the first time on YouTube, saw the review. So that's kind of what you get when you do a real versus fake. That's just how it goes down. But, uh, yeah, we'll do a happy birthday, Jay-Z. I guess... Yeah, we'll go, I'll go into that in a second. Let me give you guys a, an update on the car. Um, but I want to talk about that. I got some marijuana news. A couple of different pieces of marijuana news coming out this morning. Uh, a little bit of NFL talk. Uncle Roselli will join us on Eaters. We'll do some sneaker stuff. And, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions in the chat, man, it's your boy hanging with you solo dolo on a Friday. So if you have any questions in there, you want to want some answers to some shit, some shit that you've never uh, had answers to or that I haven't had a chance to answer, there's your chance, bro. Shoot it through. Shoot your shot. Carl, how does one be a guest on the show? Uh, I don't know, Carl. I haven't really figured that out, bro. I would really, I really want to take calls. Like, production has been the struggle of this show since we started the show, including today. Like, I have the, this monitor right here in front of me, right? <laughs> this monitor apparently has to be on and working in order for me to put stuff on the screen for you guys. So I'm going to show you some stuff on the screen here in a little bit when I go to underrated news and some stuff. And so the way we put stuff on the screen, this has to, the monitor has to work in order for me to, to, uh, to see it over here, to be able to 
put stuff on the screen. It's all one. I thought earlier, I was like, oh, fuck it. I, the monitor that came in here wasn't working. So I was like, cool, I'll just put the stuff on the screen with the over here. Like, I'll just do it with the app. I don't need to see it. I'm, I'm a G. I don't need to see what's going on. I'll, I'm good. But then I'm like, wait, this is not going to work. Like, there's no, <laughs> the, it doesn't work. You can't have one without the other. There's nothing on the screen. You can't put, you can't, you, you know, if I can't see it in studio, I can't put it on the screen for you. Sorry, is what I'm trying to say. I'm a moron here. So I call up Dow and he's like, yeah, the HDMI cables are fucked. Well, we just had this problem last week with, with the production quality. Remember you were at the show with Edgar, oh, everything was cutting out, everything was turning off. My man Dow said he was ready to leave work to come fix the HDMI cables or fix the monitor or whatever. So all the show ends, we get no more talk about the monitor. This is the frustration of production, dog. Like this is trying to be the host of the show and produce the show. Can you imagine Joel Klatt on Fox cutting to his own cameras, trying to run the graphic to put up the, on the screen when someone scores a touchdown while he's also trying to do his job, the commentary and all the shit. It's so frustrating, bro. Like it, I can't even explain the frustration. Like I came on here today. I was so pissed off like 25, 30 minutes ago. That Jay-Z thing put me in a great mood, but it's just so frustrating. and so annoying because you feel like you're trying to do literally do it all whether it's you know you're trying to host the show and you don't it's not only coming here and talking i have to have prep i have to have shit to go to i want to be able to put together a quality show for you guys so producing it all in the background as well it's just terrible so anyway i can I ca i'll call down like yo do these hdmi cables not work or what's is it the monitor what's up like and he's like oh no the cables are out and i'm like well that would have been fucking sick to know super sick to know last show when you were ready to leave work or when me and ed were doing the show like somebody just help me if you see an issue and you know the answer just somebody whether it's i mean have you guys ever had that feeling whether it's your your family your girlfriend your brother your sister where everyone just like watching you burn like you're just fucking going down in flames everyone just watching knowing they know the issue oh yeah it was a bad fuel cell he shouldn't have took that plane up oh really now he's going down burning and you knew he shouldn't like so I'm over here with the monitor situation. I'm over here with like trying to get the show going, knowing I'm going to do a solo show. No love. So that's the frustration of production, bro. It's just... So anyway, I drive all around town this morning. So it's after I talk to Down, he tells me the HDMIs are shot. I'm like, all right, well, you know, guess I need to get a new HDMI. Like, how am I going to do a solo show? Am I just going to sit here and talk for two hours straight? Like, no. I want to be able to play some shit, put some shit up on the screen. Like, give you guys a normal show. So he tells me the HDMIs are shot. We have two of them in the studio. Neither of them are any good. I, I, I didn't know that until I called. And, and then I was told that at, at noon. It's like, okay, I'm supposed to come live in a half hour and I have no idea what's going on. And this is just a minuscule. This is one example of production issues behind the scenes. So now I'm driving around, I'm going to Target, I'm going to Best Buy, neither of them have it. I end up at Micro Center, the farthest trip. Should have gone to Micro Center first. About 24 people deep in line. Thank goodness there were nine cashiers, so it only took about 10 minutes to check out, which, I mean, not bad considering the amount of people in line. It was crazy. You would have thought everybody, everybody was doing a show today, and they, and they forgot that, uh, and they forgot to give their people the HDMI cable, the mini HDMI. It's just, Danny B, light that joint up, Chise, with the fire emojis. Doug, you know me. I get off, I get off on rants, and this is how I vent, and this is how, the, this is how I am, like, I, ret I retweeted a tweet yesterday. I'm a Virgo. Virgos don't give a fuck about what you think. And I just read it's absolutely true. Like, it just is what it is. This is what's on my mind. This is what I'm telling you guys about. And it goes back to whether Stringer was producing the show. Jalal, who came in and said, my, my love is, my first love is podcasting. My first love is, you know, podcasting and the production of it and the behind the scenes. I didn't, where? Where's the love then? I'm not feeling like Black Eyed Peas over here. Where is the love? Show me the love because I'm not seeing the love. We're trying to level up the show. We're trying to continue to make the show better. I don't even, we don't even have a program. I had to call Anillo from Denver Sports Betting yesterday to ask him, hey, what streaming service are you using when you put together your videos to like stream? Are you using OBS? Are you using StreamYard? Are you using Streamlabs? What the hell are you doing? Because our team is not figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? Like we've, the back end of this show, the show could be so fucking dope. We just, the back end has got to be better. The back end of the show has got to be better. So if you love to just do back end shit, you don't want to do anything else but just back end shit and make it, you know what I mean? Like be a part of a sick team and you enjoy 
making stuff good, reach out to me. I'm just trying to make the show good. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do. And I just want people to have the same common goal. Like, do we? are we all... Are we all sitting here trying to make the show better? You know? So, it's just the frustration, bro. It's the frustration of, of life. And I know you guys have felt that. I know, just regardless, with whatever. Like I said, your family, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, whoever. When you feel like they're just letting you rot, like go down in flames. You're like, what the fuck are we doing? Especially when, you know... People tell you they care or they make you, they give you the appearance. Do ya? Cause you're looking at it like, ah, eh, I don't know that you really do. <laughs> the show is good. You'll make it great. Thanks, Anna Chuff. Appreciate you. What up, bro? Virgo season, my man, John King. What up, Dougie Fresh? Thanks for holding it down. Thomas Cervantes, been rocking with you since the 2016 ish. Keep doing your thing. Absolutely. And this is not like, this is not, I'm not throwing shots at anyone. I'm keeping it 3,000. I'm keeping it 100 billion with you. This is what happens. This is what happened. This is why the show's delayed. This is what goes on. So if we can make this stuff not occur, maybe this will go on less. It'll be a little bit easier. Anyway, car updates. Let me get into that really quickly. <laughs> another, another frustration. The reason I didn't do the show solo yesterday. Dog, I came through... To do the show, thinking everything's going to be cool in the morning. I'm like, all right, we're going to get this going. And then, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's, let me take it all. Let me take it back. My bad. I'm getting a lot of applause from the crowd right now, so it's taking me, it's taking me uh, off a little. Anyway, we're doing live cuts today, I guess, and music. But I... Wednesday, I'm sorry. Wednesday, they call me and say, yo, you remember I, I went to take my car to the dealership to get some recalls fixed. Now you're up to speed. Wednesday, they call me and say, hey, man, your car's ready to go. You want to come in, pick it up? They call me about 3.30 or 4, uh, but about 3.30. I'm like, ah, cool. What time you guys close? Six. Cool. My girl's off work that day. So now we only have one car. She can now, we can ride in her car together. We can, I can grab my car and then she can just follow me home or whatever, you know, meet back at the crib. So, I go there on Wednesday, bro. I go there on Wednesday to pick up the whip. At about I get there about five, an hour before they close, right? Get there, everyone's running out. And these are these dudes have taken care of me. I tip them too. I, I give these fools $40, $50 every time I go. Like just to take care of them because the car, the I don't know, for one, I don't know shit about cars. For two, it's good to have somebody and take care of people that are giving you good service because then they're going to continue to hopefully maybe give you good service. They're going to remember you. Any service industry, when it when it's messing with something that's important to you, you should really try to take care of the people and be as courteous and be as good as you can to them. I'm always great to these people. Continue to be great. And I wasn't bad this time either. I continue. I was still great. And I tipped the guy $40. Like, even though. So let me tell you what happened. I go there to pick up the car. And I go, the car's like almost empty. Like I got like 15 miles till E on gas. So I pull out of the thing. I go to get gas. I gas up the car. I go to pull out of the gas uh, station. And all of a sudden I like, I give it some acceleration. It's like <laughs> underneath the car. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What is going on? I, I, I'm giving it some gas. And every time I give it more than like a little bit of creeping gas, uh, and my car also, I mean, it's 330 horsepower with twin turbos. It's a, it's a beast of a motor, but that's my concern. I'm like, is something going on here? Like, is something about to fall out? It sounded like this shit was about to, like someone was grinding, bro. So I go, I go get the, uh, <laughs> I go get this, I go get the, I go get in, I go take it back. I like, I'm like, yo, something's grinding. It's not, I pull back in and the guy's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, dude. Just get in the car and take it out. So he drives like up the up the alley in the garage and comes back. He's like, I don't hear anything inside the car. I'm like, bro, I said take it out around the block. Like, give it some gas, fool. Like you're about to like like you're pulling out of a gas station and there's people down here and you need to kind of get on it a little so you don't get rear-ended. Cause they're coming. Like that. Okay. Just pull out and give it a little gas. So he goes back out, does the thing, comes back in. Oh yeah, that's crazy. I don't know what's going on. Do you mind if we leave it and have the tech look at it in the morning? Tech's gone. It's 5.30 at this time. I'm like, they close at 6. I'm like, what am I going to, you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do? Of course. Yeah, no problem, man. All right, no big deal. I uh, I don't have a car to come back and get this, though, tomorrow. Is there any way you guys can shoot me an Uber? Yeah, no no problem. 
So that's good. At least they can shoot me an Uber from my house and now I don't have to worry about it because my girl had to work on Thursday. So I leave the car. Uh, everything's cool. Whatever, I'm fine. I don't go. I don't blow a gasket or anything. Uh, it's not, you know, no one did it on purpose. Whatever the problem is. But the car definitely sounds worse. And I've never heard this problem with the car before I took the car in. So they, I'm getting the opposite effect here. I go back in Thursday. They call me. Yay, car's ready to go. It was just a motor mount, motor bolt, whatever. So... By the time I go, they call me Thursday to go in and get the car. It's midday, same time we're about doing the show now. I have to go pick up the car. I have to, um, there was some other shit I, I had to get done to. So long story short, car's all good. Everything's fine now, but that's why I couldn't do the show yesterday. That's why we had to waste, burn a day, because it just, yeah, it wasn't going to work out. Just wasn't, wasn't the deal there. Love the Blazers, bro. Trent Expert. What up, Trent? Thank you, man. Couple people on the Blazers. Nice shoes. Hang Gabe, what up? Uncle Jim, I started with you in 89. <laughs> uh, John King, fuck whoever gave the fucking solo show a thumbs down. Your mother should have fucking swallowed your ass. Absolutely, John King. This may not be, I have a, I'm having a feeling this may not be one for the kids. This may be, this may be, uh, yeah, it's gonna be obviously nothing like, not nothing like, but it's not the normal show. There's going to be some language in here. People are ranting. People are a little heated, including me, myself. I'm calming down, though, now that I, now that I vented. I have to vent. I have to get that shit out. I don't know about you guys, but when, I, when something is bothering me, I can never hold it in. To, to my detriment. To my detriment. People, I know sometimes I should have held stuff in, and I can't. It's very, very hard. Yesterday was a step forward in that. When I picked up the car, I was steaming. I was like, man, you, you fools... So because of your bullshit, I had to drive all the way from Aurora to, to over here to almost Golden to pick up the whip. And now I had to drive all the way home with no whip. And my girl followed me over here. Trust me, I was about to fly off the handle. But that's growth. Didn't fly off the handle. Look at this thing getting crooked. I feel like this is getting increasingly more and more crooked. The monitor or the uh, mount over here. You guys are going to have to deal with crooked cam when I go to that for sneakers, whatever. But anyway, yeah, so I, I didn't fly off the handle. I learned my, uh, not learned, but I did I did better, bro. I did better. <laughs> uh, trend expert, John Chill. I love it. I don't need any chill. Nobody needs a chill today. Nobody needs a chill today. I might, like I said, I might fire up some dro up here in the studio because Dal ain't in here. I don't care about the neighbors. Don't give a shit. The, the people that run this place have been that have been uh, hitting us up every other day asking us to re-sign the lease. Don't care about you. I don't care about anything in here. We're gonna I'm gonna do my own thing. So that's what's going on today. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Let me do this real quick. Christmas gifts. Can you guys help me help me with something? This is this goes right along the lines of everything I was just talking about. Not being good. I think we talked about this last Christmas season, and or maybe it wasn't Christmas season. Maybe it was birthday. But just gifts, dog. When people want to buy me gifts for Christmas, for birthdays, for forced holidays, not because they were thinking of me, not because they were on vacation, I was like, damn, you know what? TTF would like that shit, man. That is, that is totally Chai's right there. I'm going to pick that up for him. That is the shit I like. That's how I buy people gifts, and I get it. Not everyone is like me, but that's what I enjoy it because it comes from an authentic place. So now that we're getting into Christmas, my aunt texts me last night and says, Hey, what would you like to get your, or what, any idea on what Mia wants for Christmas? You know, all, you know, any idea. So we're starting to do the Christmas stuff. You guys being in the same, same, uh, not the same position, but what am I, the same realm, you know, we're all kind of similar. We all resell shit. We all got some money in our pocket. None of us are broke dicks walking around. All of us, uh, see something we like, we buy it. We're pretty impulsive. And that's, that's what we, kind of do that's the culture we're in sneakers all whatever whatever else it may be right this is all this is our shit so what do you guys do because i feel like you're just like me where if you want it you buy it and a lot of the times the stuff you like is pretty expensive you're not going to tell your aunt your mom your whoever I, I mean maybe maybe you are i don't know maybe we're different but they can't afford or maybe they can't afford but you're like i'm not gonna tell her to buy me this 250 dollars whatever it is or this whatever so what do you guys do like i would personally rather just not have anything and kick it with family than have them waste money on a 25 30 
$40 trinket or gift or whatever, some just some nonsense that I'm not going to use. I'm not going to care about it. I'm not, it's, I, I get that they want to buy me a gift. I get that that's on them, but now I got to store the gift. I got to find a place to use the gift. I got to now give it away, donate it, do something else with it. And I feel messed up because it's like, wow, they're just trying to be nice and give me a gift. But at the end of the day, like, how do you do this without being rude guys? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I'm asking you family. How do you guys, what do you say without being rude? How do you, how do you say shit without hurting people's feelings? You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you don't want to just, I'm not trying to fucking piss people off or make people mad or make people feel like I'm ungrateful. You talked about this back in the tattoo shop days. Thank you neighborhood. There you go. So I've been, <laughs> I've been on this for a minute. Give me feedback. What do you guys do, bro? Like do you, when your mom or your brother, or your sister, your dad, like these people ask you about gifts, do you tell them the stuff you really want? Cause I never do. Cause that shit's mad expensive where I already got it. I already bought it for myself cause I wanted it. <laughs> so what do you, what do you guys do? What do you do? Jason Ramirez, I ask for practical stuff that I use on the day to day. Ah, it's a good point, dude. So like maybe just be like, yo, can you just hit the Nike outlet and buy me a, buy me a pack of black socks or, you know, yeah, something like that. That's not going to kill their pocket. Maybe two pairs of black socks. Shit, a Nike outlet, they're like 12 bucks, a, you know, instead of 20. Man, just something simple like that, huh? If they go off script, I smile and give it away. <laughs> Fail beast. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's good. Just ask for money, Black Prez. Uh, oh, just ask for money. Then they're going to give you a gift and you can do something with it. That's the thing. I think that's why I, I'm, I'm in this weird, like shell-shocked place, Prez. In my family, a lot of my family members would not even give a gift card, let alone money because it was not personable. That was the thing I heard over and over as a young kid, as I was like growing into my 13, 14, 15, 16 high school days, junior high day. Can you please just give me a gift card? I don't want those jeans. I don't want those shoes. I don't want that hat. I'm never gonna wear that hoodie. Please just give me a gift card, please. Nope, could never get a gift card. Not personable. Not personable, cash, obviously not personable. So I just end up getting a bunch of stuff I didn't want anyway. And that's when I got a job. <laughs> that's when I figured out you could get a job and get what you wanted. It was great times. It was great times. But yeah, to not be rude, like it is rude to be like, just don't get me, just don't get me anything. I feel like that is rude. Or even if you say it in a nice way, oh, you don't have to get me anything. They're still going to get you something anyway. And that's my point. He's like, man, now they're wasting their money on some stuff for me that now I have to let sit here or find space for or whatever. I like the, uh, Jason, I like the practical shit. Maybe just cause, cause yeah, I don't, I don't go. I do like Nike. So I have a couple pairs of Adidas socks, but pretty much Nike socks are my shit. I don't wear anything else. So if I specify to them, like, yo, I want some Nike socks, tell them where to get it, the outlet, whatever. Then it's a little bit nicer. Then if they do something else, it's like, yeah, whatever. This year, seriously, for the very first time ever, I was excited because uh, I saw this pan. Me and my girl were, it's like a, it's kind of like a spaghetti. It's like, actually, it's not spaghetti. I'm sorry. Dog, it's, it's the dopest saucepan, but it's deep enough that you can boil shit. The nonstick on it is super fire, but it's crazy expensive. It's like a $145 pan. But if you, if you know good cookware, good cookware is expensive. I was so excited when my lady was like, we need to get a new pan. I came across this one. I was like, yo, let's just ask my mom to get this for us for Christmas. Just be like, yo, mom, this is all you got to get. Get this gift. Good to go. And I think we're solved. I think that, and I was so excited for it and I haven't done it yet. I haven't told her, but that was, this is the first very legit, the first time that I've been like, Oh my gosh, I finally have something to tell her. Cause I was going to turn around and just buy the pan. And then every other week now I'm, I get looks from my girl. Like she's, you know, burn something or mess something up with one of these shitty pans we got. She's looking over like looking at me like, mm, really wish we had that good pan. Really wish we had that nice pan. And that's where the imp, the, the old me, the normal me is like, yeah, let's just go get the fucking pan. Like, let's move on. 140, boom, let's go. Let's, let's, is it going to make our life easier? Is it going to make us better food? Is it going to make us happier? Let's go. It's not worth messing around with $145. But because we have Christmas coming up, 
People are going to be buying people stuff. We can't. We don't get the pan right away. We're going to wait for the pan, which is now causing turmoil on the other end because you're still shitting the bed with your crappy cookware and you'd like to have a new one, but you now have something to give or you have an idea to give the person that wants to get you something. And this is probably one of the first times ever that I've been like, really like, wow, all right. I have something to get, something to do. Tell them you need socks and show them which ones. Hang Gabe, there you go. Just tell them to give you gift receipts and a chop. <laughs> That's like the same thing as a gift card, bro. It's like, oh man, the amount of stuff that I've gotten over the years with no gift receipt. The, my extended family are terrible with gifts. My missus just says, how many redos I get? Fail beast. <laughs> I like that. Then I go get what I want. That's good. Redos. We need some redos in my family. Yeah, I guess everyone's family is different. I think people take certain shit personal too. People get hurt. And that's just in like in life, right? We have people that you, something happens and you look at them like, what? Why are you getting mad at that? You're really getting mad at that right now? You're mad? You're like mad? That makes you mad? Like mad? Like you're going to haul off and crack someone in the face? Mad? Everyone's different. I look at people like that sometimes. They probably look at me like that sometimes. Juro style. Receiving cookware during a pandemic. Let's go. Exactly, bro. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's... Uh, you guys can keep, keep commenting in the chat. Like I said, ask any questions, whatever you... Any questions you guys want. Yeah, shit. Ed, that's enough. I don't want to hear any more of you right now. Here's what I do want to hear more of. My man Jay-Z. Let me just let me drop this on you fools really quick, bro. Jay-Z, happy birthday to Hove. Don't ever go with the flow. Be the flow. Don't ever go with the flow. Be the flow, fool. Listen to this freestyle. This is from, uh, shit, 2016, I want to say? 2015, maybe? Whenever he dissed Spotify, dropped title. All that shit. Here's the uh, title freestyle. And I'm just doing this as a celebration for my man Jay-Z. Happy birthday, December 4th to Sean Carter. Here we go. And I don't need no middleman to talk but to my niggas. I understand if you don't understand, I figure I'm Jigger. That's where we differ. I take what's mine, you accept what they give you, I get you. I don't take no checks, I take my respect. Pharrell even told me go with the safest bet. Jimmy Iovine off of the safety net. Google dangle around a crazy check. I feel like YouTube is the biggest culprit. The niggas pay you a tip for what you're supposed to get. Uh, yeah, get up, you. Fuck you know you too. You die for equal pay, right? You know when I work, I ain't your slave, right? Right. You know I ain't shucking and jiving and high fiving. You know this ain't back in the days, right? Right. Damn. Damn. But I can't tell how the way they kill Freddie Gray, right? Shot down Mike Brown, how they did Trey, right? Talk that shit. Let them continue choking niggas. We gonna turn style. I ain't your token nigga. You know I came in this game independent, right? Title, my own name, same difference. Oh, niggas are skeptical when it's their own shit. You bought nine iPhones and Steve Jobs is rich. Phil Knight's worth trillions. You still bought those kicks. Uh, Spotify's nine billion, they ain't say shit. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. The only one they hating on look the same as you. That's cool, I know they trying to bamboozle you. Spending millions on me, they trying to confuse you. I had to talk to myself, oh, you used to. It's politics, it's used to. Hey. Uh, that shit is, bro, bro, bro. One of my favorites of all time. The title, Jay-Z Freestyle. Hove is, god damn, Hove is on a different level, man. That's why we're celebrating Hove today on his birthday. Have you guys ever heard Jay-Z talking about genius level talent? You guys ever heard that clip of him talking about everybody, every person has genius level talent? talent inside them 
me and my lady talk about this so much because we're so jealous when we see these young people or these kids, 15, 18, 22, 25, that find exactly what in the hell they were put on this earth to do, what they're passionate about. Oh, I'm so jealous. Like just what they were put here for, dog, what they were made for, their passion. They don't want to do anything else. I feel like I have nine things like that. I don't have one. And I'm so jealous of the people that got one that found it early because they tapped into that. They found that genius level talent. They found the thing that God gave them the genius level talent at. Everybody is walking around with genius level talent. But this, this many, this few of us are able to tap into it. We're able to actually figure out what in the hell we were gifted the genius level talent at. We're over here at a marketing agency. We're over here pushing pa papers at a desk job. We're over here talking shit on radio. When we're meant to really be a golfer, a marksman, a freaking whatever, like you could, it could be anything there, you know, and that's, I'm really jealous, but let me play this clip of Jay-Z talking about that, man. I think it's, I think it's really dope. It's giving everyone genius level talent. What our job is to find that genius level talent and then to apply it in the way that supports that genius level talent. Quick example is a guy named Earl Manigo who was said to be way better than Michael Jordan, but he didn't make the lead. He was selling drugs. He got caught up in drugs. His circumstances got in the way. So you have to define, you have to find your genius level talent. Then you have to believe on it. Then you have to believe in it so hard because people will put their shit and their insecurities on you. Like when I was young, my uncle, I went to my uncle and uh, I had my demo tape, my first demo. I was really happy about this shit, you know? I played it for him. I, you know, I was like wide-eyed. I'm like, it, it went off. The first thing he didn't even say, oh, keep up the good work. He was like, man, you ain't gonna never be better than that Uncle Jay. I know he loved me, I forgive him for it, you know, but I think that something must have happened to him where he was trying to uh, pursue his dreams and didn't work out for him, so he was putting that on me. Um, so you have to even, people that are close to you and love you, you have to have so much belief in this genius level talent that no matter what anyone says to you, you have to have this focus. So you have to find it. Yes! <laughs> then you have to believe in it. Then you can't let nobody put their insecurities and shit on you. Hell yeah! Then you have to work. I mean, shit. I believe I'm in here right now. Somebody that will change the world. Or maybe 19,000 people that will change the world. Hey. You just believe in your genius level talent. I believe in you. You just got to keep your mind fresh, slate clear, and you got to stay forever young tonight. Uh -huh, bro. Bro. That shit speaks to my soul right there. And the first time I ever heard Jay-Z talk about that was just like a little 15 second clip. It was this clip right here. Every human being has genius level talent. And there are no chosen one. God is given every single person uh, genius level talent. You just have to find what it is that you are great at and then tap into it. Every human being. That was the first time I'd ever heard that. And then, of course, the, the clip I played before was the long form version of him. He was actually talking about it at a show to a crowd. And man, that just spoke to my soul because I do. I really do believe that shit. I think the guy is uh, I think the guy is 100 percent spot on because how many times do we see people pick up something later in life? Or pick up, you know, and they're great at it. And it's like, man, I wish I would have found that at 20. And the people that do, we, we do have a lot of people that find what they're great at at 20. Check this out. Time Magazine's Kid of the Year. If you have not heard of this, uh, this little girl, look her up. Time Magazine's Kid of the Year. Damn it. I, forgot, I, I had it written down phonetically and I erased it. Gitanjali Rowe. Gitanjali? Gitanjali? Gitanjali Rowe? She's a 15-year-old girl. And, dude, talk about genius-level talent. Straight genius. She's done so many things in a, in a science lab. 
And now she's working. She goes to STEM School Highlands Ranch here in Colorado. You guys, unfortunately, I mean, very, very sad. You heard about the STEM school shooting. Uh, I think, uh, shit, is that a couple years back now? STEM school shooting at STEM School Highlands Ranch. Just an awful, awful thing. Well, that's where she goes to school. It's a school for just very, very bright kids. And she's on another level, bro. She's named Time Magazine's Kid of the Year. She's had, she has a ton of other awards, but this year is, is huge. She's developing different vaccines, uh, or she's helping, um, excuse me, she's helping develop the vaccine for coronavirus. She's working in different laboratories, helping out different scientists, working on tons of different projects. She actually is uh, heading a project to filter and bring clean drinking water to a bunch of countries in a, through a scientific process that she has pioneered. And now she's teaching other people, other scientists about those processes. We're talking about a 15 year old, bro. Talk about genius level talent. That just, that just popped in my head because I saw her the other day getting praise on the, uh, on TV and well-deserved. Like I said, from here in Colorado, some STEM school Highlands ranch, just crushing it, bro. Just crushing it. Sample that hot line to a beat and make it a hot song, TTF. Should I? You made it a hot line. I made it a hot song. Yeah. Was that a good Jay-Z right there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys ever heard my hove? You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I'm kind of off now, but let me play you my last hove clip. You guys ever seen Fade to Black? This is one of my favorite parts in the Fade to Black uh, documentary. Fade to Black is a documentary that Jay-Z put out along with the Black Album in 2004. Remember 2004, the Black Album? That was going to be Jay-Z's last album. He's retiring from rap. He commissioned Just Blaze and Timbaland and Ninth Wonder and Kanye West and all these super producers to create this incredible album. And the Black Album is incredible. Absolutely one of my favorite albums. It's the reason that every year on December 4th, I know it's Jay-Z's birthday because the way the Black Album opens up, with his mom on there. And uh, that's the reason I know. But anyway, fade to black. They're in the studio. And Timbaland, he's in the studio with Timbaland. Timbaland's got a big ass jug of water. And he's just chugging this big jug of water. And he was like in his lifting phase. Timbo was getting pumped at that time. And uh, it's funny because <laughs> Jay-Z and them are in there. And dude, Timbo is throwing on beat after beat after beat. And they're all hits, bro. They're all hits, and then they finally get to dirt off the sh dirt off your shoulders. Check this out. I know where I'm going. Huh? You play me something. Well, who's not? Oh man, I go through this every freaking time. Yeah, what? <laughs> I, 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 go ahead. It's good. I, I got nothing. <laughs> Timbo, Jay Z's trying to get him to play him some beats. Timbo's front. Like oh, you don't got nothing hot. Run it, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see Jay. The wheels are just turning in Jay Z's head, and he's just like this at the beat. And you can see him. This shit is so ill to me. All right, it's the first one. I never really, I don't remember that beat. I don't recall that beat. What about this one, though? I think this went to a Timbaland Magoo song. Timbo kept it for himself. Look at Jay in there, just. You got bounce? You got something with bounce, Jay said. You got bounce? I ain't got no bounce. All right, now he's challenging Timbo. Look on Timbo's face. Okay, all right, all right. It's like almost like a beat battle. Oh! Is that a ludicrous hit? Oh! Who remembers that one? Is that Luda? I think it is. Thought maybe I was tripping. There you go. Oh! Jay Z right away. He's like, that's mine. I know that's mine. That's gotta be mine. And you see him. He's got that nasty face on his or look on his face. Timbo's going nuts too. Timbo made the beat and he's going nuts. 
Ugh. Fade to black. Check this documentary out from 04 if you have it. Oh, that's that. That's that. All right, you pick a pick. <laughs> take your pick, he said. I like Ric Flair. You know what I'm saying? Ric Flair. I'm the best there is. He said, I feel like Ric Flair. <laughs> the best there is. What's funny about that is that's not even Ric Flair's tagline. Ric Flair is, uh, <laughs> obviously, you know Ric Flair. Woo! The best there is is, that Bre- is Brett the Hitman Hart. And he didn't even say the whole thing. about. He said, I feel like Ric Flair. The best there is. <laughs> Maybe he was just giving Rick credit for being the greatest. I don't know. But there is a wrestler that has a saying, that has a slogan, that has a tagline, if you will, that starts with that. And it's Bret the Hitman Hart. It's the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. That was his tagline. That's how he ended his interviews. And I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. I'm pointing at the wrong camera, by the way. Doesn't matter. Anyway. (laughs) Oh... Fade to Black brings me back to that time. So ill, Danny B. Easy pick for me, neighborhood. What? Dirt off your shoulders? Is that the sickest one? AP, ooh, light it up, Cheech. What's up, AP? How you doing, bro? Oh, uh, good times. Good times. Great oldies. Cool 105. But that's Jay-Z's. Uh, happy birthday to my man, Jay-Z. Let me uh, move along here real quick. And tell you guys, just very quickly, a couple marijuana stories. Um, I don't really... Oh, shit. Is my uncle ready to go? Oh, man. He texted me 34 minutes ago. Oh, he's probably going to be off for shit. Let me just... Let me confirm heaters with him. <laughs> oh, shit. My bad. I just told him. <laughs> are you ready or what time are you off? Yeah, because that way I can just... Uh, yeah, we'll see what's up with him. Let me hit these marijuana stories real quick. So two things this morning. First, I see a story that out of Washington, that the House has passed a decriminalization bill for marijuana. So what this is, uh, what this means is that Friday, the House passed in sweeping passed a sweeping legislation that would decriminalize marijuana and expunge nonviolent marijuana-related convictions as Democrats sought to roll back and compensate for decades of drug policies that have disproportionately affected low-income communities. So there you go. Whether, that's, whether you smoke weed or don't smoke weed or whatever, I think this was coming. Just like marijuana being legal throughout the country. Do we all agree? Like this should be legal already throughout the country. Let's tax it. Let's have some, let's get the States with some revenue coming in. If, if, if alcohol and, and DUIs, uh, or, or, um, cause I think, you know, driving and under the influence, all that stuff's the big issue, but look at the DUI deaths from alcohol per year. I mean, look at the, look at the side effects of pills, all the other stuff that's legal, all these other drugs that's legal. And we can't, marijuana, marijuana can't be legal. So I think, I think we're all, maybe we're all not, but if you, you're allowed to be, if you're not on that page, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You're allowed to be as wrong as you want anywhere else, but I can't let you be that wrong here. If you listen to this show, marijuana being legal throughout the country is probably the, I'm going to just go with that, bro. Then you can be right. I'm just playing with you. You're entitled to your opinion. You're wrong. Your opinion can be wrong, but you're entitled to it. But anyway, the House passes that for, uh, to decriminalize marijuana. So how this works, in a, 20, or in a 228 to 164 bro- vote to approve the measure, the bill would remove the drug from the Controlled Substances Act and authorize a 5% tax on marijuana that would fund community and small, and small business grant programs to help those most impacted by the criminaliz- criminalization of marijuana. So people that are sitting behind bars... People that have, you know, weed convictions that are in jail for weed, all that kind of stuff. I don't know how retroactive the article I have here, it doesn't say. But I'll be curious. That's my biggest question is how's that going to affect those people? If it's a nonviolent crime with marijuana possession or marijuana possession with an intent to sell, whatever, how does that affect those people? Does it depend, does it depend on the amount of marijuana? Does it defend, depend on the type of charge? Um, I'm curious. 
I'm curious because I think there's a lot of people sitting behind bars that for marijuana and it's legal now in, in a lot of places. So you, you're doing time for something that's legal in certain parts of the country. doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. The other piece of the marijuana um, news coming out today is that the NBA will not conduct random marijuana tests in the 2020 and 2021 season. I feel like we saw this coming. Let's go. I like this one a lot. I'm very excited about that. I think that makes the absolute most sense. And if we can get the other sports leagues to follow along, let's start testing or focusing our random testing on the performance enhancing drugs and the drug abuse drugs. Marijuana not falling into the performance enhancing category. So I like the statement there from the NBA. We're going to focus our efforts and random testing program on performance enhancing products and drugs of abuse. I love it. I love it. Couldn't love it anymore from the NBA. NBA doing great there. Love it. Let me see what's up in the chat here. Oh shit, Ramsey. What up, bro? In the uh, super chat, $5. Happy Friday, dog. Respect for the solo show. Appreciate you, Ramsey. My guy. Brian Jackson about to step to the dispensary. Be right back. <laughs> got to get you some, bro. Fire it up. There you go. AP got the cool 105 line. Any Colorado cats, you'll know the cool one. You get the cool 105 shit. Most inter- inspirational podcast? Neighborhood? Could be, bro. Could be. Nixon made pot major crime because he hated hippies. Uncle Jim. Did he really? Dead President, still one of the best songs ever. J-Dub Killing Kicks. Absolutely. I'm about the president, the rep of the me. Get money. Boom, boom, boom. Those chimes come in, bro. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Guys, let me put that on real quick. Bro, we don't care if we get clipped today. We don't care about anything. Someone could literally come in here in the studio and say, what are you doing smoking weed in here? You can't smoke weed in here. I'm going to tell them, get the hell out. And they're either going to unplug our, unplug our shit. Right. There we go. They're going to either unplug our shit and not get out, or they're going to get the hell out and we're going to continue doing the show. So that's what we're doing in here. Uh, on a Friday, happy birthday, ho. Yeah, man. We don't just shine. Love it. We illuminate love it. the whole show. You feel me? Factions from the All right. other side would love to kill me. Spill three quarts of my blood into the street. Let me, uh, let's get Uncle Jim on the phone. Uncle Jim is ready. I apologize. I told him like three different times, different times. But I, I thought everything was going to be working in the studio. I had no idea. I just thought we were going to be working. I didn't know I needed to go get new cords and do all this other shit. Do how to put stuff, stuff on the screen for you guys. So let's, uh, yeah, so let's get Uncle Jim on here. All right. Good shit. Good shit. Hello. What's going on? Hello. What's going on? What's going on? You hear me? We ready? I think so. I think we're all good. Did you hear my rants? You hear me? Yeah, getting getting mad at the show or at a uh, technology today. Yeah. Everything going on? Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Yeah, I thought it was the Jay Z hour. <laughs> the Jay Z hour. It is. It's Jay Z's birthday. We gotta we gotta celebrate. Yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, especially for people that don't know, like yourself, you can learn a thing or two. Put you up right. on game. Yeah, exactly. All right, you. I don't think you're gonna be able to hear. The heater's intro, Uncle Jim. So it's going to sound like silence to you for a second. But let me play uh, that intro and then I'll, I'll come. You'll hear me come back in talking to you. But you won't hear the music underneath like normal. Make sense? I'm ready. All right. Let's jump into uh, a little segment we like to call Heaters. All right, Em. This is my heater. I dare you to hit it. Hot shit. Hot shit. All right, heaters. Week 13. Well, I'm bringing Uncle Jim back this week. He wants to run it back. I want him to run it back because we went 5-0 and last week. A combined 5-0. and So I told him, come to, come come through with like two or three games. Uh, just be confident on the games. Five Let's just try to... The 49ers. There we, there we go. 
Let's just try to give out some winners. Uncle Jim picked the 49ers. He told you last week, you're probably not going to need the points. They're going to probably win the game straight up. And what happened? They win the game 23 to 20 on a last uh, second field goal as time expired. Good shit. Good shit. All right. How about uh, your first one for week 13, Uncle Jim? Where are you going? Week 13, first one, Washington and Pittsburgh. Washington and Pittsburgh. Let me look this up. Pittsburgh's given the seven. They farted around the other night, the other afternoon, actually. And uh, they're just going to light it up and they'll just, they'll crush the skins. It'll be more than seven. This is an interesting, oh, so you're taking the steal. I thought maybe you, I thought maybe you were on the other side. I don't, no, I don't know why. on the other side on that. Now, Pittsburgh, just, that, that game was goofy with the delays and the ba 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 Here's so my, they're going to get game on and start showing everybody here come the playoffs and here we are. This is a game I looked at for what, a lot longer than I'd like to admit and I I just could not choose Pittsburgh, but I could not choose I was I was close. I was like, man, you might want to give me Washington on the upset. Is the Washington football team about to be the first team to beat the Steelers this year? No. Could you see that happening? And no. here's here's why here's let me let me let me give you a couple examples on why I think Pittsburgh may struggle. Okay. I don't know that they're not gonna cover. I don't know that I don't think they're gonna lose the game. But in the trenches, they cannot run the ball. Did you see them against Baltimore? Their offense was swing passes to Benny Snell. Or their uh, running game. I'm excuse excuse me. Right. Their whole running game was swing passes to the outside to Benny Snell. On third and three, they could not get three to keep the chains moving. They had to throw a screen. They had to do a little flip pass. They had to do some trickery. I don't like what's going on with Pittsburgh's running game and the Washington football team. If they have one strength, it's the defensive line. That defensive line is a beast. As far as uh, Ben's not going to be able to hang around the pocket. They're not going to be able to run the ball. I'm not sure. I don't think, I don't know if Pittsburgh loses, but man, to cover seven, I just feel like they're going to struggle on offense this week. But you're taking them minus the seven. This is interesting stuff. I like it. Yep. All right, so let me put you down here. Uncle Jim's got Steelers, minus seven. Oh, damn it. I, I clicked the straight cash sound bite, but my <laughs> my audio cord is unplugged because I'm plugged into you. So it doesn't work for the phone. So you're oh. not going to be able to hear that either. Well, I guess you wouldn't be able to hear it anyway. Not like it really matters. All right, my first one up. This is, uh, man, another thing, another game I went really back and forth on this week. I'm going to go with the Patriots. I said a couple weeks ago, I think the Patriots are tanking. Patriots are at the Chargers this week. They are a favorite. They're minus one. Patriots, minus one point on the road in LA. I just feel like Anthony Lynn is the worst coach of all time. I think you had a chance to win that game last week against Buffalo in the fourth quarter. And not only do you not win the game, you end up losing by 10 because you're so bad at clock management and using right, your timeouts. Yeah. I just, I can't stand Anthony Lynn as a head coach. I think Justin Herbert is a great uh, young QB, but Bill Belichick, five and two, five and two against the spread against rookie quarterbacks. I'm going with the Patriots to shut down the Chargers. Pats minus one. What's your uh, next one? My next one, Saints, Saints at Atlanta. Saints at Atlanta. Okay, which side are you going on that? Saints. Let me see. Saints or what do you I, have? I Minus three. Be a lot. I think they'll be. I think they're just going to roll along here. This, this kid at quarterback's just going to start running more, and which screws me up on fantasy league. <laughs> 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 you know, who in the beginning of the year thought I was going to have to worry about a running quarterback in New Orleans? Right. Every day. So you're I thinking knew. you're thinking that uh Atlanta last weekend, them lighting up the Raiders was just fool's gold. Yeah. Okay. So we're going on the Saints minus three with Taysom Hill at quarterback the for the third week in a row. I like that pick. I like that one. All right, so we got three on the board. How many more do you have personally? One. Okay, cool. That's perfect. I have one more, so we'll be going uh we'll have five up here. Go ahead and go with your last one. My last one, the hammer lock. The hammer lock. Is this your most confident? This is my most confident. You're I like it. Pitts, you're going to have Pittsburgh undefeated, and you're going to have the Jets finally getting off the snap. Oh, my gosh. He's taking Adam Gase and the winless team that yep. isn't even trying to win. Yep. No. <laughs> Plus the nine and a half. You think the Raiders are that bad? I think they're going to stumble all over themselves this wow. week for some reason. Raiders are on the road 
The Jets are off the snide this week. Jets are plus nine and a cover. half. At least they'll cover. <laughs> Je- or at least they'll cover. You, so you think there's a possibility for an upset, but you like to oh, cover. Oh, yeah, I think there's a possibility. I just think it's, I just, it's there. I like it. It seems like it's brewing. I like it. He's going with the Jets plus nine and a half. Raiders, West Coast team, flying over to the East Coast, and it's an early game. 11 a.m. kickoff, Mountain Time, 1 p.m. East. So you know how it goes. I think that's one of Dallas' favorites is taking teams that go uh, West to East. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. And when they play West, like if it's Seattle going over to uh, Buffalo a few weeks ago, early game, he he took uh, Buffalo on that one, I think, too. He, he likes that. So you're going Jets plus nine and a half at home. Home dog. Early game. Home West dog. Coast team home traveling dog. in. That looks good. That's interesting. Um, my final one here. I went back and forth between a couple. And. Oh, man. Tennessee. This is a, this is a Tennessee and the Browns. I'm going to go with Cleveland getting six. I like Cleveland getting the points on this one just because of the two-headed monster, Chubb and Henry. The Browns are better at stopping the run than the Titans. Titans have had trouble stopping the run. If you have trouble stopping the run, how in the hell do you stop Chubb and, uh, oh, did I say Henry? Chubb and Kareem Hunt, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, How do you stop Chubb and Kareem Hunt if you have trouble stopping the run? Yes, they have Henry on the other side, but Cleveland hasn't been that bad against the run. It's a lot of points. Um, Tennessee hasn't looked great. I'm going to take Cleveland. I'm going to take Cleveland in this one. I don't love it, but uh, I like them plus the six. Good. Sounds good. Cleveland's, Cleveland's pumped up. They got the whole town pumped up. It's They're, they're such a weird 7-3, and three, aren't they? Yeah, they like, are. They did not feel like a t- – like, you look up and you're like, wow. But I feel like they have been better yeah, without Odell, I Odell Beckham. I didn't pay that close attention until all of a sudden, boom. I mean, you know. Yeah. You turn around, you're like, wow, Cleveland's 7-3. You're seven so and used three. to going, oh, yeah, the Browns. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so to recap – we're going Steelers minus seven, Patriots minus one, Saints minus three, Jets plus nine and a half, and Browns plus six. Two dogs, three favorites. Those are your heaters for week 13, right? Yeah. Those are your heaters week 13. Brought to you by the good homies at denversportsbetting.com. Make sure you guys check out Denver Sports Betting on social media. It's at Betting Denver on Twitter and at Denver Sports Betting on Instagram. They just launched their fan funds game where each week they give fans a chance to make their pick against the spread and the total of the Broncos game to win some cash. Broncos are playing the Chiefs this week on Sunday night. I have no idea how that one's going to go. But if you want to get in on the action, make sure you hit up Denver Sports Betting on social media at Betting Denver on Twitter at Denver Sports Betting on Instagram. How do you, uh, real quick, how do you think that the Sunday night is going to go for the Broncos, Uncle Jim? Not good. I know, right? Too bad they don't offer Bronco insurance. What do they have on the spread? Have you have you even seen it where it's at right now? It was now? 14, I believe. Bronco insurance. <laughs> You're a fool. I can't even remember the last time. Is 14, Denver two tutties. Yeah, 14. underdog this year yet? What would you say? Uh, has Denver been a two-touchdown underdog this year? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I can't even. If they haven't been this year, I couldn't tell you the last time they were. The, and they got beat down by the Chiefs in uh, in Denver. Now this one's in Arrowhead, but the Chiefs yeah. do the Chiefs do like they play down to their competition. It seems you know what it seems like the Chiefs play down to their competition against every team except Denver. <laughs> Feels like De- 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 Denver Denver's they're having trouble they're having trouble all around. I mean they just got you know it's politics this thing that thing they're just running into themselves. Yeah, yeah the uh, too much too much bullshit going on. The other one I was looking at, and I just could not pull the trigger, was Green Bay and the Eagles. Did you look at that one at all? Green Bay's yeah, minus I did look eight. At that game. Right, Green Bay minus eight at home, and then you got. I get all excited about Green Bay all the time. Aaron Rodgers, boom, boom, boom. As soon as I lay the money or the pick on him, he sticks it right up the Kulu. Ain't that the truth? Green Bay is like. Green Bay is very interesting because they they do blow out bad teams, right? This is a spot where it's like, oh, you should hammer Green Bay this week. Because look at look at them last Monday night. I right. mean, who, who who the hell did they even house? I forgot who it was. Bad team. Who did Green Bay uh, stomp? Uh, Chicago, Chicago. Chicago. They stomped yeah, Chicago. Which, That's what they do. Which, if you look at their if you look at who they've played, they beat the shit out of the bad teams. They don't really stumble against the bad teams. The problem Green Bay has is playing good teams. Anyone that's good, that's where they have problems. 
Philly's not a good team, but I didn't want to mess around with the NFC East because it's like it's wide open in the NFC East, so they're all hungry. Gosh, Philly has just looked so bad, though. I was in the same boat with you. I was in the same boat. I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to take Philly because they or I wanted to take Green Bay excuse me minus the eight because they've looked so Philly's looked so bad and Green Bay has blown out bad teams which I was saying but on the flip side I was like maybe I take Philly because obviously Doug Peterson's got money on every game he's he's throwing the ball all over the field at the end of the game he's calling timeouts with less than a minute to go he's going right. for two point conversions when teams can't even win just to screw people out of the spread maybe I should bet right. Philly they're getting eight and a half maybe. That's yeah. why I went back and forth. I was like, shit, this team doesn't want to lose at the end. They don't just concede. Must have a lot of relatives playing fantasy ball. Exactly. Car- Carson Wentz, you look at his stat line, it's just garbage. It's crazy. It's garbage time stats. But all his productivity is garbage time. They let him go down. That drove me nuts on Monday night. You're not on my Instagram, my social media. I went off on the rant. It drove me nuts. Even though we hit Seattle minus five, it drove me nuts. So many yeah. people got screwed when on the uh, minus six or six and a half or whatever on Seattle, yeah. and they shouldn't have. They were on the right side of the game. They picked right. the game right. It's just fucking bullshit that he Garbage did that. Time, it dro- yeah. it so man, that made me like so NBA mad. Bullshit. It's it like made me so NBA mad. Bullshit. Yeah, I was, you know, I was like, you fools don't deserve to score, and those people don't deserve to lose the money because they were on the right side. They had the right play. They thought you guys were going to get mopped, and what happened? You got, you came out and got mopped. You got ran all over on. You got passed all over on. You couldn't do shit on offense. Carson Wentz was crapping in his helmet all night, and then they come with that backdoor cover with less than a minute to go, blowing timeouts and going for two. Give me a break. Give me a break. Nightmare. Nightmare. Anyways, Uncle Jim. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, giving us some time. Talk to you later. You want to promote anything? No, I'm good. (laughs) All right, later. (laughs) I got to go to work. All right. See ya. See ya. Uh, Shout out to Uncle Jim for joining us. Another thing I feel like the Packers, too, just to wrap this up, the Packers are like that. The Packers are like a sports car. A sports car looks so good in the summer, doesn't it? Just cruising down the highway, cruising down the back streets, windows down or a uh, top down blowing by somebody whether it's a, a a hot blonde haired chick with the hair blowing or a cool tan guy with the sunglasses on cigar whatever the shit is just cool i feel like it's the packers that's aaron Rodgers, the sports car right but what happens when it turns winter a sports car doesn't do very well you start hit it starts hitting ice it starts getting stuck in the snow you probably just leave it in the garage most of the time don't you you don't take the sports car out you don't pull the top down so all of a sudden the sports car isn't as cool I feel like that's the Green Bay Packers. That's Aaron Rodgers. And the, the, the wintertime is good teams. They, they, the summertime is bad teams. They look so cool in the summer. They just beat up on everybody. They blow them out. They look so cool, right? The Green Bay Packers, just the coolest team ever. Oh, we're just cool. We're just cooling. Sunglasses on, no problem. Sun shining, hair blowing. But then when the winter comes, what happens to the Green Bay Packers? The winter's a good team. When the Packers have to play a good team, what happens? They just fall apart. It's like they forget how to play. And it started early on this season. This season, it's been the exact same. Somehow the Packers, the Packers are eight and three. But then when they played Tampa Bay, got got not only beat, they got molly whopped 38 to 10. And look at Tampa Bay. I mean, we haven't Tampa Bay hasn't looked that impressive probably since then, right? Okay. So that's Tampa Bay. Then they they trounce Houston. Whatever. But then Minnesota, 28 to or 28 22, Minnesota. Would you say Minnesota's a good team? I wouldn't consider them a good... I mean, I think they're good. I don't know if they're great, but they're good. I'd say they're not bad. And then they beat up on Jacksonville. Then Indianapolis a couple weeks ago. 31-34. They lose that game at the end. Whenever Green Bay plays good teams, it's the winter time for them. They are the sports car. That's what happens to Green Bay. John King, don't disrespect the Brownies. Are you back on the Browns train? Oh, it's 8-3. and three. My bad. I said 7-3. and three. Shit. My fault. Are you back on the Browns team, though, John? I know you're a hardcore critic of the Browns. You kind of remind me of with the Broncos. I'm like that with the Broncos. I'm on it. I'm so critical. I just they do some of the dumbest shit, and it just bothers me. But I'm still a fan. Like I'm be a fan forever. But you know, it's a little, little frustrating, a little annoying, if you will. Uh, let me do some. Where are we at on time? Tim, the kid is crushing today. Hour fifteen and shit. Let me just play you guys this craziness, and then we'll jump into the sneakers, um, and we'll do this comparison. Oh, let me see. All right. 
There we go. Now I got, I'm plugging in my thing so I can put this up on the screen for you guys. I don't know if you guys saw this shit, but check out this girl, dude. She, uh, she's doing a dance, a TikTok dance. Oh shit. Oops. My bad. She's doing a TikTok dance and in her room. And you know how everyone just sets, if you guys know TikTok, if you're unfamiliar with TikTok, you set up your phone, you kind of push the hands free thing and then you dance or you do whatever in front of the phone and it records your shit. Well, check this out. This girl, I'm going to play this video. It'll be up on screen. This girl is in her room film, filming a TikTok while some guy tries to break into her crib. Check this out. Who are you? Alexa, off. Who are you? Please get off. This dude's at her window. Please get out. No, please get out. Am I your friend? Yes. Who are you? Please get out of my apartment right now. Please get out of my apartment right now. She goes out the front door. Get out. She's standing out of her apartment. Get out. Homeboy's still in the apartment. He's like coming through the, the patio door, bro. He just opened her patio door. She's following a TikTok in her apartment. Now she knocks on her neighbor's door to try to get her neighbor to uh, open up the door. She's obviously scared as shit. And that's kind of the end of it. That's really, that's really how it ends. But wild, like this guy comes into her crib through her patio door while she's filming a TikTok and it's all caught on camera. The gentleman that uh, opened up her window muttered in Spanish Am I your friend? So he was speaking Spanish at first. She had no idea what he was saying. She turned off her music. And then he said, am I your friend? Can I be your friend? Angel Moises Rodriguez Gomez was charged with two counts of burglary, second degree assault, stalking, and malicious destruction of property. He was later released on bond. And I guess now the girl's a little terrified of that she's not been sleeping at her house she's now sleeping at her friend's house because this guy's out and free even though he was charged with those those uh two counts of burglary second degree assault stalking and malicious destruction of property he was released on bond so now he's out roaming the streets and she doesn't feel safe in her apartment i don't blame her can you guys hook her up with some damn how are they not going to hook her up with some uh private security or some like what the hell is that shit called some protection, bro. Like, what? Are you kidding me, bro? Someone just rolls into her crib. You guys file these charges. You release him on bond. And then homegirl just now has to stay at her, her family's house? What is that? I don't even understand. I don't get it. Makes no sense. John King, always a Browns fan, but hate Baker. Got it, bro. It's hard to, you know, it's hard to tell. I see you dog cussing him all the time on social media, but you never, you can never tell. All right, so you're just not a Baker guy. That's kind of the way I don't, I dislike Fangio. I just can't, I can't stand Fangio. I was pumped initially when we had, dude, we had the mafia going here. You had Vic Fangio hired as the head coach, Rich Gangarello as the offensive coordinator, Ed Donatel as the defensive coordinator. It was the, it was the mafia, bro. It was all Italians. I thought I was... I was geeked for it. Now they're just not looking so hot. It doesn't look like they have a plan. I think Vic, uh, Vic finding the quarterbacks the other day. Come on, Vic. It was over with. Like now you're going to drag them back through the mud and you let everyone know that you, I disciplined them and I find the quarterbacks an undisclosed amount. They already got dragged through the mud. They already missed the game. They already had to watch Kendall, Hint Kendall Hinton go one for nine for 13 yards and two, two INTs, guy. The punishment was there already. What is you punishing him going to do? Come on. Come on, Vic. Please. Jay Nasty, bomb cast, bro. Thanks, Nasty. What up, bro? I know you don't get to catch too many of the lives. Happy to see you in here, my guy. I don't understand. My soundboard just took a, took a shit. Oh, there we go. I was trying to give you, give you some shots, Jay Nasty. Give you some shots, my guy. All right, uh, what do we... Yeah, let's do the sneaker. Let's do the sneaker shit. Let me jump in there. Let me put some uh, 
You could get some of our music, bro. Now we do. Where we at? All right, sneakers. Brought to you by our homies at Pure Spectrum CBD. As always, you can go to PureSpectrumCBD.com. Use the code MUP. Save yourself a little bit of money off your order. You've been here in Dow talking about this hand cream. Bro, the hand cream is straight fire. I didn't even know what was going on with the hand cream until the homie Dow uh, recommended it on the show. So now I'm rocking with the CBD hand cream. Great for the winter time, cracked, dry, messed up hands. It's, it's actually, I think it's not, I don't think it's face cream. <laughs> Re- rehydrating face cream. I'm calling it hand cream, but I've been using it on my face and the shit's good. They also have a uh, bunch of other products, pet products as well, CBD infused, not marijuana infused, no THC, just CBD. And it's at PureSpectrumCBD.com. Use the code MUP. All right, let me, uh, we got this camera going. Let me try to straighten this. Is that, that's crooked as shit, huh? God, that's bothering me. Let's see if we can straighten it. And I'm going to grab the shoes for you guys. Hold up. All right. So, as I was talking about earlier in the show, if you missed it, the Zoom Air Jordan 1s, we're going to be doing a little bit of a comparison. This box here, let me get my laptop out of the way. That's the easiest way to do this. We're good on charge. Bang. You know, cooking with Crisco over here today, cuz. All right. So, down a little. Give me some water. Look at this, bro. I just spilled water all over my face. Get on my shirt, too. No, I didn't get on my shirt. All right, so the, uh, sorry, I had to get some water. The sneakers in this box are the Bayou Boys Jordan 1s. We're going to take a look at these. These are $150 retail box label for you bang bang and now these come with this special uh packaging this tells you all about the zoom air jordan one which we'll go over in a second it tells you about the comfort of the zoom air jordan one what makes it different a bunch of different stuff there pretty cool the shoes are wrapped in two individual uh i was gonna say dust bags it's not dust bags tissue paper and they have a Looks like an N on it. So they just got a, like a kind of like an N, but it's like a lightning bolt. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Cam's on point today. Okay, cool. So there's there's the shoes. Now, they come out the box different than a traditional Jordan 1. They come laced, just like this, okay? So, come laced up like that. You see the materials on it. You see the croc skin if you will, representing the Bayou. So what I read on these is like a Zion Williamson uh, inspired or themed New Orleans Pelicans, New Orleans, the Bayou kind of themed Air Jordan 1. I think the shoe is flames. I think the colorway is flames. I think the lacing options that they give you. Let me set that up here. Let me show you guys. They come with two different sets of laces. They come with purple and they come with I'm sorry, three different sets. The black that's in there and then purple and green. Damn, that purple don't look very purple, does it? I promise you this is purple. Shit's a little dark, but it is what it is. So I have this one unlaced for the comparison because here's the big thing. These Zoom Air Jordan 1s are different than your traditional Zoom Air Jordan 1. There was a couple things I didn't notice. So for people that even have the pairs, maybe you didn't notice either. Let me go over the materials and then I'll give you, I'll show you some of the, the things I noticed. Suede on the toe box here, a very nice suede. Damn, I wish I could lighten that up a little, huh? Point it. I'll do that close as I lighten it up. Black. How's that not lighting up more? Anyway, you can see, oh, there you go. See, it's you can see it's a suede on the toe box. The leather's kind of like a croc skin leather, and then it, it's like a denim midfoot panel. So that is like a tie-dye denim, which is super dope to me. 
And then you have a cutout Nike swoosh. Some people didn't love that. Some people, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care either way. I would probably like to see the Nike swoosh on the denim, but maybe it looked shitty. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's whatever. But I like the denim. The denim is is super fire. So some people were calling, someone called these the Ross Jordan ones to me on Twitter, which like uh, said I was surprised that I liked them because they were the Ross joints, which that's kind of funny, but I didn't see it that way. I thought overall they looked sick. This right here on the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the shoe, on the outsole, very, very nice. And this is different. This is like a foam, a foam rubber. It's different than this rubber on the outside. It's like a foamed, foamed up rubber, right? One of the things, so that's kind of the material. Oh yeah, this uh, heel, heel pad too. This is new. All this stuff's new. And I'll go into it with this thing here in a second. So something I noticed, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but there is a 1985 perforated right here. Damn, you can't see it. You can't even see the perforated holes in the shoe, can you? That's whack AF. Producer, can I get some producing? Oh, it's just me. Okay. But anyway, there's a perforated 1985 written right here. Or, not written. Yeah, it's right there. It says 1985 and it's in dots. It's all perforated. So that's that's something I didn't notice and you don't notice until you take the laces out of the shoe. The other, a couple other things. There is this heel padding. Oh, I'm gonna have to lighten this up, bro. That ain't gonna do. Let's see how that looks. I don't even care if I'm washed. I'll be washed all day. Shit looks correct. Damn, still can't see the perforations in the toe. Can see the inside at least. Ooh, maybe I'll lock the... All right, let's see if that worked. If that didn't work, I can't help you guys, sorry. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's, it's too hard to run this without one camera. Damn, it's so dark on the inside. Doesn't even matter. So, I guess it kind of does matter. I wanted you to see the inside of this piping and the perforations on the inside of the shoe. Maybe, let's see. Should I zoom this bitch? Uh, go this one. Look the same. See it a little better, but not still not as great. Ah, damn. Well, there's a padded heel cup back here. I wish you guys could see it, but you can't see it. I'm sorry. There's like, oh, there you go. You can kind of see it there. God. You see how this is padded up top? This is different. That's not on the traditional Zoom Air Jordan 1s. Also, fire, fire insole. Extremely fire. It's got a swamp on it. Really dope. Love that. Now, this is like a, a little, it's the like memory foam. It's almost like memory foam-esque, okay? Now, this is where I got confused. I stepped into this Zoom Air Jordan 1, and I thought it was going to be like the... Uh, thought it was going to be like the the previous zoom air jordan ones where it was going to have like the, the the pockets right the bubbles underneath it does not and i'm very confused by that because i'm like how wasn't that the whole deal with the zoom air jordan one it was going to be this way more comfortable jordan one you came out with a product you put air pockets underneath it and then you give us this one and you take all that away i don't understand and especially when you give us this, this thing here. And again, I think the colorway, materials, everything, all that shit is fire. I'm just confused. I just want to have a conversation with someone at Nike so I can understand why you took away all the things that were good from the other Zoom Air Jordan 1 shoe when giving us this one. And let me show you some of those things. Or actually, let me show you this first. So look at this joint. Just, just peep it real quick. This tells you about 
the heel up top right here. Uh, this tells you about the zoom airbag in the in the heel, right? If that is in, if that exists in this shoe, it's underneath this white shit, and it's very hard to feel. So it's not it's not uh, it's not like very comfortable. Like if I'm I'm pushing on it right now with my finger, bro. And I can barely feel it. I guess I can feel it a little bit in there, but not a ton. Not like the OG Zoom Airs. Now, let's let's continue down along the list. So Zoom Air thing in the heel, very barely noticeable. And when you have the over, the, when you have the insole in the shoe, definitely not noticeable. Not noticeable at all. This up here is what I was talking about. Collar is made of two free floating foam panels for a more relaxed fit. That is true, and I do like it. So instead of getting just like this against your ankle, they put this extra layer of like foam inside, so which is separate from the the leather outside. Normally they have the leather outside, and then they just have your it goes right to the inside. In here you got a separation in between. See, so you got an extra layer of foam, which is fine, which is cool. It does add to the comfort in the Achilles area. But my question is, why'd you take away the comfort on the bottom? I'm still confused. Okay, so we continue going down the list. And this is something I definitely felt. Behind the tongue. The tongue has a whole nother piece as well. It's like this flap of skin almost. This extra like material. And it's a softer like perforated material up top as well. And so it, it does, you know, breathes pretty nice there. But I didn't, it felt this, this, um, the shoe felt like a regular Jordan one to me with a little bit more padding in the heel cup. That's what I, that's what I felt. Now you go along the bottom. Okay. Here's the, here's the bottom piece and it shows you the insole and it says sock liner. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. It's going over everything there at the bottom. All together, which add the comfort. So, ah, damn, you can see that picture. Now, you notice what it doesn't show is like all the Zoom Air bubbles along the bottom that you got in a normal Zoom Air Jordan 1. Again, confused on why they're calling this a Zoom Air Jordan 1 when you didn't give us the same Zoom Air technology. If you're not, if you don't own a Zoom Air Jordan 1, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I have two pairs here. These are, I don't even know if they were early this year. You guys have to tell me. I think these were just earlier Zoom Air releases. And this is what made Zoom Air great to begin with. First of all, these do not have the Jordan smell. These Bayou Boys do not have a Jordan smell to them. I have multiple pairs and they don't have them. So these ones, I couldn't remember if these do either. No, I don't smell it in this one either. But here's what I do notice. You take the insole out of this Jordan 1, and it's pretty similar, right? Pretty similar insole as far as the memory foam. Maybe the Bayou Boys is a tad thicker. You notice it does have like a, it has a weird like layer in between it. You see that maroon? Well, it's a, it looks dark on camera. This is the Bayou Boys insole over here. It's got the maroon like, pat, like it's almost like an extra layer of foam between. So maybe it's just a little bit thicker. But overall, I don't notice, like, it's it's not, you're not looking at, like, a Dr. Scholl's versus, like, a, you know, something totally different. They're almost the same kind of shit. Here's where the big difference comes in. The Zoom Air Pocket on the bottom of the shoe. This is what makes, sorry, scooting forward. This is what makes the shoe great. This is what makes the, look at that. This is what makes it, like, unlike any other Jordan 1. The Zoom Air Pocket all across the bottom of the shoe. It goes all the way down to your toes from your heel. That pocket. Why do we not get that pocket on this Bayou Boys Zoom Air Jordan 1? It just looks like a regular Jordan 1 inside, except for it has a, a heel airbag, which I pushed the shit out of this so you can kind of see, you might be able to see the outline. But that thing, the heel airbag, honestly, let me tell you guys right now on this Bayou Boys, this heel airbag 
feels smaller than the heel airbag that's in the insole on a on a pair of SB Dunks. You know how an air, pair of SB Dunks have the heel airbag built into the heel? And it's like that. This feels thinner than that shit, dog. Like, why? It doesn't feel like there's a heel airbag underneath that. And it definitely, it just doesn't. And so now, let's say it did. Let's say it was, it was a great heel airbag, whatever. The big issue is the fact that you can't, you can't, uh, you can't feel, you don't get full foot comfort. There's nothing that fills your feet the same way as this, as this does. This gives you your entire foot comfort. That was the point. Like, that's why we were like, whoa, Zoom Air Jordan 1 is the, is the future. Like, this is game changing for Jordan 1s. They can start releasing crazy classic colorways in, with Zoom Air comfort. Like, this is what I've been looking for. I'm getting old, bro. There's a reason I love Boost. It was the comfort. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm very kind of disappointed. And I'm, I'm not, you know, gosh, I hate it because I am I love the colorway. I love this shoe. I love the laces. I love the price. I loved everything about it until I put it on my feet. And then I just got so confused. Let me uh, give you guys another one. Love another example. These are the Rage Greens. Zoom Air Jordan 1. Again, just another 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 sleeper. If you fools are not, if you're sleeping on these, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Look at the bottoms. Just on both of these. Just so fire. It's so strange, dude, because all these uh I'm sorry. Remember when I said it was an N earlier on the on the paper? It's definitely a Z for Zoom Air. I don't know what I was thinking. Just an idiot doing the show by himself. Check it out. This has that exact same Z on the bottom. And it does on the fear uh not the fearless, the racer blues as well. Exact same Z on the bottom. On this one, though, you don't get any of that. You don't get any of the typical Zoom Air stuff. You get a whole new bottom, which this looks cool, whatever, but you get no Zoom Air inside. So I'm wondering why the change. Like, if you're going to give us more padding and more whatever, why drop the price to 150 and why not include padding for the rest of your foot? Only heel padding or whatever. So let's just do this one, same way. Insole. Zoom Air Jordan 1, similar, all the same, same kind of thing. And then you have this airbag underneath. If this is the case, bro, if it, I haven't looked at the chat. Maybe you guys have answers for me on all of this. But, and I'll look in a second. But if this is the case, bro, if this is like, if, if this was like a, let's say these were one-offs, like these were like, um, all right, hey, this is going to be Zoom Air. And they decide to go with it and for whatever reason. Maybe they found the material they're using for the underneath isn't sustainable. They can't make as many as they wanted to. It's too expensive. Whatever the case may be. Let's say there's a reason behind the scenes at Nike that we don't know. And these are never made again. And these become insanely rare because these were the first Zoom Airs and they were the best Zoom Airs and they changed them for no reason. They tried to do all this extra stuff they thought would be good, but they took out the legit good thing, the best thing, the best part. They took it out and they added all this other stuff that's cool, but it's not the best part. And that's what Nike did here. And what if they decided, you know, we're not going to make those anymore. This is the new Jordan 1 Zoom Air. All virgil out on the top with the padding exposed. virgil out on the tongue, padding exposed. Perforations behind for extra comfort perforated padding in the heel cup for extra comfort. What if this is the new wave of uh, Zoom Air Jordan 1s and they don't make these other ones anymore because they're like, damn, we were having... These were 175 by the way. A normal Jordan 1 costs 160 This year, they upped it to 170 I believe. These were 175 So Zoom Air Jordan 1s always had a premium price on them, on them. And maybe they were like, you know what? These didn't sell as well. Maybe it was the premium price. The 175 wasn't doing good. Maybe we need to change it. We need to lower the cost on them and give people a more affordable shoe. And this is the direction we're now going with the Zoom Air Jordan 1 line. Who knows? Maybe you guys know. I don't. I'm very confused. I sit here with a bunch of shoes in front of me, all with saying Zoom Air on the tag. And they're all, well, one of them is different than the other two. But they all say Zoom Air. So I'm, 
I don't know why they why Nike changed. Just confused. And then they, it just feels like they're trying to give you a sales pitch. Have you ever been with someone that's trying to sell you? They continually talk a lot and they keep talking. They keep trying to keep you interested. They're giving you extra shit. They're doing some extra. You know what I mean? Because they're doing this song and dance up here in front of your face while some shit's going on behind the scenes. I'm wondering what the hell's going on behind the scenes. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. Or that's what I'm here to tell you guys today. I don't, I don't understand. Different materials, different everything. The fit is different on these two. It's definitely, I don't know, it feels a little tight, but I didn't break them in. So, and I think the other Zoom Airs are a little tight too, but obviously it has extra padding in it. So you're going to have to, maybe you rock the laces a little looser than you normally do or whatever. I don't know. But I found it very interessante. Let me get my... Let's get my computer back up here. There we go. What if that thing just went <laughs> crash down? Shit the bed. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's see what you guys are saying. <laughs> Use your phone light, Adam Eby. Damn it. Sorry, bro. Um, let's see. Amperta, thank you. I love you, Ampert. Uh, let's. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I need to try out a pair of Zoom Airs for sure. Danny B. Um, wonder if you can... Brian Jackson, wonder if it impacts breathability. I don't know. Like, I don't know, man. It's interesting. It's so like, it's weird because we, we say that, but bro, if you, uh, if you get a pair of these Bayou boys, there's literally an extra piece of material over the tongue. Just so this has like some padded perforations up here, but they don't go all the way through. So they're not really breathing and you have good gene material on the front. So it ain't breathing there. Then the toe box has your perforations like your normal Jordan 1. But dude, when you reach in and you put your foot underneath the toe box, it feels like a neoprene padding. Your, your toe, to be more comfortable, your toe is not touching the suede. You're not touching the other side like a normal Jordan 1. It's like a Yeezy, how there's something else underneath the toe. And a Yeezy, it's that very uncomfortable plastic that we all hate that kind of smashes your toe. This, it's not. It's a very soft this kind of material, just like the back of the tongue, kind of like a, just a neoprene soft feeling material. But like I said, with that, it does make the shoe feel more cramped in the toe box when you put it on. When I put it on and walked around my crib, I noticed, cause I was trying to like, I was like, what's up with the comfort here? What is going on? And that's immediately when I started questioning everything, I put them on, walked around the crib and I noticed that the toe box was really tight. Like I was like, man, maybe they just have to break in a little bit. And then I was like, oh, maybe I have to loosen the laces. And I did that and it helped a little bit. But I'm just letting you guys know. Out of the box, toe box is tight. Maybe you might even want to go a half up. The laces here, you have to loosen them as well because it's it's tight all together down here. The shoe is just it's tight, bro. Shit is tight. Um, let me see. How do you miss noticing it? Yeah, EB, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, Every, I don't think a lot of people miss noticing it because they just got the shoe. They probably pulled it out the box, looked at it. Oh, these are cool. Put it back away. Unless you put it on your foot, which I did. That's the only reason I noticed. I put this on my foot and I said, wait, what is this? I started looking around I'm like, no way. And I, I started sc literally scrambling right away to get my other Zoom Airs. And I, I put one of those. I'm like, this is not the same shit. What is going on here? And that's when I had to start investigating. I saw this fancy paper they included. I saw this other stuff. And I, this is a guy, I love the colorway. I'm not trying to shit on it. I'm giving you honesty. That's all I'm doing here. I'm giving you guys the honest, the real deal holy feel about the shoe. I love the shoe. I think it's great. But I don't, there are some things that I'm a little bit, it's like weird. Zoom is very comfortable, but it makes me go half up because... It raises my foot a little. Fail Beast, there you go. Dude, I'm not sure that these are any different, Fail Beast. So he's saying in the regular Zoom Air Jordan 1s, he's had to be, he's had to go half up on them. I might see, and I'm, I'm on true to size. These, you might have to go half up as well, Fail Beast. Do you have Value Boys? And did you get them in uh, your true to size or did you go half up? Let me know. And how do they feel? It's just interesting. <laughs> extra flap of skin <laughs> you like that below not good <laughs> you don't even have the sound up sorry um were the other zoom ones more expensive than the bayous the reason for the price difference i don't know anything about them though yeah yep that's what i was saying brian just different bro 
Dow with the interesting emoji, the little with the little guy. It is, right, bro? Like, I'm confused. Don't worry. I don't know if you were uh, tuned in earlier, but we have all these packages here, Dow. Don't worry. You're. Uh, I'm not going to open any of them. You can open them when you get here. I was just opening these shoes. Well, oh, set my fire red for You can open the fire red fours if you want. I don't care. But uh, very interesting. So do I... Oh, so do the Hulks have the same as the poor man Dior's? Yeah, dude, same. Same shit. What do you mean? These are the two pairs I have here, bro. This is the Hulks and the poor man Dior's. Isn't, it? Isn't that what you're saying? They both are Zoom Air, regular Zoom Air. Old school Zoom Air, normal Zoom Air, what we're used to. Not this new Bayou Boys Zoom Air. This is a different Zoom Air. That's why I'm confused. So whenever they come out with a Zoom Air release... How do we know what we're getting? Is it if it's $150, we know it's this style, and if it's $175, we know it's this style? Like what's what are we doing here? Interesting. Dow better be alive. I sent him the Sakai's. EB, way to ruin it, guy. I said I didn't even know it was in the box earlier. And EB EB slides through with There we go. Good stuff. Maybe I should open it. Dow, maybe I should now we now that we know. The Sakai's are in there, fool. <laughs> TTF was looking around like Scooby and the gang looking for clues. Bro, I am legit confused. Are you returning them then? They don't deserve your purchase, neighborhood. I don't know that I'm returning. The only reason I'd re definitely return like is if they didn't... If I need to wear them around my crib for a couple of days, neighborhood, just to like see if, the, see if they break in a little bit. Because, yeah, if they're too tight, I'd return. I'd, I'd exchange for a 12 and a half. Um... I like the colorway. You know, I'm so I'm so torn, bro. Because a couple of years ago, I would have been like, I'm keeping no matter what. I need purple Jordan 1s. Now, with the court purple 1.0s, court purple 2.0s, these, I'm purple Jordan 1 now. Like, I don't I don't I don't have the same necessity anymore. But you know, I mean Yeah. Yeah, dog, all three. Uh, let's see who's that? Joshua Cruz, but does all three say Zoom comfort? Yeah, bro. That's my. That's what I'm saying. They all say. Well, I don't say Zoom Comfort. They say Zoom Air on the front. Where Zoom Comfort? Where? Maybe I'm misunderstanding your question. But how I'm understanding it is, you're saying Zoom Air. Yeah, they're all. They all say Zoom Air right there on the toe, or on the uh, tongue tab. I'm sorry. See, Zoom Air, Zoom Air, and then the other one says Zoom Air too. So they all do say Zoom Air, Zoom Comfort. I don't know. I don't know about that. But I do know this bitch got full length comfort in it, and so do the uh, poor man's Dior's as EB called him, full-length comfort. On this one, you get a, a heel airbag, which they brag about to you on this piece of paper. But this, 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 uh, nowhere, oops, sorry. Nowhere does this piece of paper mention full-length comfort. It just shows you this diagram at the bottom, and it shows you the insole. This is where I'm very confused. It says the insole goes in over the airbag. Oh, here, let me point this in. All right, so it says, the insole? Oh, maybe I'm tripping. Let me look. <laughs> uh. Sock liner. Foam drop in. All right, this is exactly what it says, bro. Sock liner? Which I don't even know what that... Oh, I'm so... This is so confusing to me. Read this real quick. Doc, look at the top piece. It looks like an insole, right? At the top. See number one? And then number one down here in the correspondence? It says... Oh, shit. It says sock liner. So up top, does that look like a sock liner to you? It looks like an insole, number one. Number one, matched up with number one, it says sock liner. That's the start of my confusion. Then we get number two. Heel zoom bag top loaded into foam drop-in. Zoom heel bag top loaded into foam drop-in. Does this zoom heel bag look like it's anywhere under... Let me... You can't even see the zoom heel bag. I don't even know what this, what they're talking about with the zoom heel bag. Inside the shoe, there is no zoom heel bag. This is it, bro. There's an insole and this. So it, the zoom heel bag must be under here. And if it is, like I said, it's the sorriest zoom heel bag I've ever felt because the at Nike SBs have it heel on the here on the heel of the insole, and it's this shit is legit. Like it feels like a zoom a zoom airbag. These do not. So check, then check this out. Let's go to number three. <laughs> this is hilarious right now. Look at this. 
you go down the list and after the after the heel the heel thing it says foam drop in allows for all day actually let me go back to the heel zoom bag top loaded into foam drop in foam drop in so if the foam drop in is the thing underneath the insole i guess so let's look at let's start with the bottom up the bottom is the rubber outsole it says rubber sidewall allows for the comfort of foam with the iconic cupsole look of the jordan one so i think they're talking about this on the bottom and this is what i was telling you about earlier this is a little more foam like foam feeling this is not rubber like the outside this outside is your normal jordan one rubber so this is brand new this is a whole new piece of technology and like i was saying maybe to them this is a way to get the cost down to make it 150 whatever the case may be or to them it's more comfortable but if you have any kind of brain in your head i don't know how you could think this is more comfortable than this just put the shit on and walk around the lab fellas how but anyway that's the that's the bottom part that's number four what they showcase then number three talks about the foam drop-in which allows for all day comfort i'm a get i'm guessing that's the foam drop-in is the thing that's underneath there And they call the insole a sock liner, is what I'm assuming. Heel zoom bag top loaded. Heel zoom bag top loaded into foam drop-in. Foam drop-in has to be the thing that's underneath. A foam drop-in can't be the insole. Sock liner has to be the insole. Man, this is this is bad stuff. Or maybe I just call everything different and I'm doing terrible. This is not good. It's just not the same, bro. It's not the same. And then they, they give this to you to explain it, which further complicates things. You know what I'm hoping for? Now that I'm sitting on these two uh these two pairs of dead stock zoom airs right here. I'm hoping this is this is the new wave. I'm hoping this is the future. I'm hoping they never go back to uh regular zoom air again. I'm hoping that OG Zoom Air is dead. And everybody that's got pairs, if you got a poor man's Dior, if you got the Hulks, if you're sitting on some Hulks with the with the sick extra green late dude. Pfft. Dog, these are so ill. Who is so, and Matt, can you imagine can you imagine sleeping on these? Can you imagine being the guy that's just like, nah, I just don't want those? They're under 300 for a Jordan 1. And you're just with all the shit flying out. You're just imagine being the guy that's like, nah. Those are just <laughs> probably the most comfortable. It is probably it is the most comfortable Jordan 1 you've ever put on your feet. And the colorway is fine. The extra laces, dude. Look at these. Oh, whoops. Look at these. Woo! They come with the blacks and they come with the the bright Hulk green joints. Let me let me get you let me get you a real look, bro. With that with that three M on the swoosh, just hitting bright green everywhere. Bright green insole, bright green stitching on the metallic swoosh. I don't know if you can see it there. These are just imagine. Can you imagine being that guy? I can't. I can't even imagine it. This is just so ill. So yeah, the disappointment is a little, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed with the, uh, the Bayou boys, just because they're not what I thought they were going to be as far as comfort. I even got two pairs because I was like, oh, I'm going to sit on one of these and I'm going to rock one of these, bro. And I put them on and I was like, what is going on here? I don't even get it. I hold one pair of the racer greens, Jack and juicy sequence. There you go. Fail beast. I got a couple pairs of Hulks. There you go. A couple pairs. See? See what I'm telling you? You got a couple pairs. Man's got a couple pairs. Imagine not even just not having one pair of these. And they were under. I mean, these were 210 all day. All day. These were 220, 210, like resale. 175 retail. You could have got these 50 bucks over retail. Imagine not paying 50 bucks over retail and having a couple pairs of those sitting around. Especially if they were if they retire these. If this is it for the Zoom Air Jordan 1. This is it, and this is the new model. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We might have to, dude, we might have to go. We might have to go. Uh, stuff all over. We might have to go do some pickups. We might have to burn some burn some GOAT credit. By the way, the GOAT credit just hit the account yesterday. Thank you to GOAT. Actually, two GOAT credits hit the account. They returned my mochas, so I got refunded for $364, which I paid for those mochas. Which now they're at 394, dude. In like two weeks, they've jumped from 364 to 394. If you don't own any mochas and you want a good investment for quick cash, like a shoe you could flip within the next three to six months, maybe doubling what you pay now, buy the mochas. 
buy the mochas at 394 right now or maybe a little cheaper in your size you know what you're at buy those bitches 400 bucks and dude they're gonna be worth they'll be worth six to eight quick six to eight in six months i feel like three to six months this is my uh re resale projections i'm buying out all the zoom air greens dow palantonio exactly there you go dow's ahead of me quit lying you know i hooked you up with your first air jordan one with my first air jordan one or you mean the zoom air one did i what did i say i don't remember what i said eb i'm sorry bro was i lying i'm sorry i just felt like kevin McAllister on uh home alone when he's telling his mommy because he doesn't want to go up to the go to his room did i spill something did i call him that I'm sorry. <laughs> Love that. About to have the boxes of them stacked along the wall during the cast. Dude, me and TTF about to snipe all the OG Zoom airs, Dal Palantonio. We are. We're gonna have we're gonna just line the wall. The walls in the studio. It'll just be boxes of Zoom airs. <laughs> uh watch them brick just harder than uh Viagra. That'll be the worst ever. Zoom Air, better comfort than a Jordan 1. Jonas, absolutely, Jonas. If you got these OG Zoom Airs, the Hulks, the poor man Dior's, uh, the Graphites, you know what I'm curious about? Do any of you fools have the confetti joints? The craters, the craters. Do any of you guys have the craters? If you guys got the craters, let me know. Because those, are the craters like this or are the craters like this? I can't remember. Let me, the sock liner might give it away. Crater, Zoom, Jordan. Uno. Let's see what we got here. Craters. Let's get some images. I almost bought these when they came out, and I, I just, I was like, ah, I don't like them that much. They kind of look like a wool. They look, look like a winner. Jordan 1, but they're not going to give you a winner feel. Oh, dude. These, they got, they don't have the same, same Zoom Air tag as the Bayou Boys, but they don't have the same Zoom Air tag as these either. They have like a, it's like a hybrid. It's like this Bayou Boys, but then it's got stitching, red stitching along the side of it. But I don't see... Oh, it does have exposed foam. I see exposed foam. Woo! Uh-oh. Chris Roberts has the craters. Dow Palantonio. Where's Chris Roberts at? Full. Put him on the phone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wonder... Uh... Damn, dude. I wonder... Yeah, those craters, bro. Are the Crater Jordan 1s the same as these OG Hulk Zoom Air Jordan 1s, these Dior Jordan 1s, or are they like the Bayou Boys? How much were the Craters? Damn, I'm tripping now. This is, we're going, uh, wow, we're going two hours solo? Jesus. My mom always told me I talk too much. All right. Uh, craters. Damn, dude, this is interesting. This is very interesting stuff. Crater Jordan 1, Zoom 175. So they were on this Zoom Air tip, but they do have the exposed foam from the tongue. Oh my gosh, 165 on StockX for those craters right now? People do not, excuse me, people do not want that shoe. <clears throat> oh, yep, there we go. Look at this. Crater Jordan 1. Yeah, bro. These are uh here, let me let me put my let me put my screen up here and show you guys. Real quick. So the they are 175. They do have exposed foam, but they look like they look better uh i don't know they don't look uh, they're different than the bayou i don't see i don't see the extra foam and all the shit like the bayou boys nah, that's not the same it's not the same i'm making an executive call i don't think they're the same but i also look at all the new zoom air jordan ones coming out look up the new new calendar of zoom air jordan ones they all look like the bayou boys Zoom Air Jordan 1 2021. Dude, I was seeing like, uh, you guys call my, you know, my Atlanta Hawks pair that I have of uh, Jordan 1s? 
what the hell are those? Um, the highlight reels where they're like a dark maroon and the bright yellow. You guys call them the Ronald McDonald shoes? Bro, you guys need to check out the... There's a pair of Zoom Air Jordan 1s that are straight Ronald McDonald that are coming, bro. They're not good, in my opinion. I'm not, not my style. I think the Hawks joints I have are way better. I can't find the Zoom Air Jordan 1 calendar. I saw it the other day. Oh, Zoom Air Comfort releasing in 2021. Let's see. Okay. Oh, here we go. Look at it. Get some photos. I actually want a photo. You already know the only little one sticks to my on me. You love me body. Here day, here day, here day. Let me click out some of these. Uh, here we go. All right. Look at the uh, Zoom Air Jordan ones here on the screen. Those are, look at that. Those are absolutely like the Zions there. Those are dropping in 2021. Or the Zions, the Bayou boys. Those are absolutely looking like the Bayou boys with all that padding. Jordan Brand will be will be offering Air Jordan 1 variant beginning 2021. Do, uh, dubbed the Zoom Comfort. While will feature Zoom technology and one of the most comfortable Air Jordan ones to date. With the Zoom Air Jordan 1 the top sneaker, da, 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 da. I thought this was going to tell us about different variants. Full said variant at the beginning. Like it's going to give us a different variant of the Jordan. What's going on here? Information. Expected to debut. Look at this retail price of 140. They're dropping these lower. Full, these are the budget. This is the this is not real Zoom Air. Look at this is the Ronald McDonald pair I was telling you guys about. I saw those were coming, these wheats, the purples, and these are all going to be 140. The lower price attached to the iconic silhouette will likely hit among many, so don't sleep. Get yourself a pair, blah, 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 blah. Nothing good. Nothing good. Not telling us why Nike's changing and also not telling us if they're going to continue to offer the OG Zoom Air Jordan 1, bro. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it all. Makes no sense. I don't know. I wish I had better answers for you guys. I don't get it. Only mystery is Adidas sizing. <laughs> Neighborhood. That's true. No, actually, they give us uh, mysteries with their, their damn... Uh, Stock photos, too. You never know what you're going to get. Jacked and Juicy Sequence. Yes, the new Zoom Airs all look different to the old one. Maybe that's the... Oh, maybe that's because these are women's Zoom Air? Yeah, but these aren't, bro. And they look just like these. So, I don't understand. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find answers, bro. I'm trying to find answers. I just don't... I don't get it. And if you notice, look up the uh, Zoom Air Jordan 1 Summer White. Have you guys seen those ones? Is it summer white? Summer white. Not some or white. Summer white. There they are. There they are. Let's see. This is another pair that's coming. Another one of those $140 joints. And it says these drop December 1st, 2020. I didn't see these drop. Look at these ones. Let me go. Uh, where are we at? Boom. Look at these. Summer whites. Same shit. 140 on here. Yep. So they're now. Okay. 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 Maybe I'm un understanding. Right here. These are being called the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Comfort. Zoom Comfort. They're not being called the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Air. Is that our difference? Is that Nike kind of pulling a fast one on us to get people to buy all the initial pairs because they think there's the gonna people are gonna get the comfort of Zoom Air? Well the people that are up on it. Yeah these said they came out December 1st. I didn't see I didn't see these drop. Same as the Zions I have. Look at that same kind of heel pattern too. Look at that. 
Look at that. Or not heel pattern. Uh, bottom of the shoe. as the Bayou Boys. Damn, but they hit us for 150 on the Bayou Boys. And they're saying all oh, these are going to be 140. Is that because of the Croc skin material? What's going on here? The denim? Confused, bro. It's a lot, man. It's a lot to work out. It's a lot to try to understand. Budget airs, Danny B. Look at that, bro. I think we might have figured it out, fellas. Zoom Comfort versus Zoom Air. But the Zoom Comfort Jordan 1s do say Zoom Air on the tongue tab. They don't say Zoom Comfort. So I guess the real, like, tell is going to be the bottoms. Once you look at the bottom and you see this foam inside the rubber, which is dope. And it's honestly, I don't know how it's going to wear over time. It may actually be better than this shit. They miss, this may be terrible over time. And that's why they're switching to this. But I'm just telling you as a guy that's tried these on and just walked around in them uh, for a little bit of time, these are way more comfortable than these. Having spent equal time walking around the crib in these, these, these are way more comfortable. The Hulks, the old school Zoom Airs, more comfortable. The Bayou Boys, just not as comfortable, man. Um, and I don't know. I don't know over time. I have no idea. Maybe that's the, the thing there. Maybe stock, not super high, as everybody said. Uh, let me see here. What is going on, bro? Get this elevator out of my face. I want to hear that again. There we go. All right. Are we out on time? Shit, we are out of time. We're 207. Holy smokes, fellas. Thank you guys for uh, sliding through today, man. Hanging out with your boy. Thanks for helping me with the audio in the beginning. Thanks for everyone that came through to tough it out. If you've been there the whole time, I love you. If you haven't been here the whole time, that's cool too. You can dip in and out. I understand everybody uses the show in different capacities. I'm here for it. Whatever you guys need. Crate, uh, neighborhood craters are not labeled comfort. So the craters are regular Zoom Air. And uh, from the Bayou Boys on, Zoom Comfort. Get, what were there? Four pairs of these Zoom Airs that they released. They released these, the rookie or the uh, Poor Man's Dior's, the Craters, and then that that like all three M pair that just looks awful. I don't know if you guys have seen those worn. Oh my God, they're terrible. One of the worst looking shoes I've ever seen worn. Go on Goat and look up some used pairs of those Zoom Air three uh, M. What are they called? The Slate or that's probably just made that up, huh? <laughs> Slate. That's what they look like. They're like a gray. It's like a, the whole shoe is 3M. They look uncomfortable as shit for one, and for two, uh, the <laughs> I don't even know what for two was. Sorry, I'm looking. I'm trying to look at my phone. That was saying that once you when you watch the show and you're not doing the show, you think of so many more things that you could have said in the moment, or you're like, God, this guy's. What about this? What about you? You, you keep on track more because you're not waiting to say something. You're just listening. And when you're just listening, it's easier to respond or it's, or it's you know, anyway, I thought that was a funny, funny thought. Let me look at this really quick before I get out of here. I'm curious. Zoom Air Jordan 1. They had four pairs, I think, but I'm not positive. One, Hulk's Craters. Fearless. The f zoom at full. Where's my cameras? Look at this. I don't even know if it's going to show up right. But oh, it just looks like an all black Jordan 1 on the phone. But bro, those right there, they look the worst used. If you look up a used pair of those, they're just so creased and beat to shit. If the person's worn them. I mean, I can be able to tell on the phone. Oh, yeah, there you go. Maybe. Zoomed in. That's his toe box. Look at that creasing. And it's not like good Jordan 1 creasing because it's not leather. So it's just like the, the toe boxes just get smoked, dude. I mean, look at that. But, yeah, now that I'm looking at these craters on used pairs, look at They got the same Zoom Air Jordan 1 bottom. Look at the bottom. 
Look at the outsole. Look at the outsole. Same exact shit as these, right? Same shit. Same as the Hulks. Everything all the same. So the Zoom Air Jordan 1s get that treatment. The Zoom Comforts get whatever's got going on here. And again, I don't know if it's good or bad for long term. I haven't tested it long term. Short term, it's not as good. I'm just telling you that right now. It's not as good. Oh, no. Oh, phew. my camera or my uh, computer died. Fearless. Yeezy Breads tomorrow. Are you guys going for those? Jacked and Juicy sequence. Good luck on the Yeezy Bread. I got my pair, but no box anymore, and they're like fire damaged or smoke damaged or I don't know. The outsole looks kind of messed up, but I'll probably, uh, damn, will I go for a new pair? I don't know if I'll go for a new pair. Maybe I would. If I don't even know at this point, though, Jacked and Juicy, you think I'm really going? I don't know. Does that sound like I have a plan together? How about no? It does not. Marco, damn, I'm so late. Missed most of TTF by his lonesome, LOL. Yeah, it's all good. He can run it back, bro. No big deal. How much were the Shima ones, Dow? They were, dude, God. The Shima ones were 300 plus tax, bro. They're badass, though. They're super sick. Uh, But yeah, I just don't need them. But if somebody needs, also, they're tight. Bro, they're so tight. I put my foot in that Razor's liner. You got to skate. You're going to have to skate the shit out of them to break them in. And they're a 13. And I wear a 12. So you buy the skates a half size up. In the gods, I bought a 12. They're true to size 12. They're, the liner is tight at first, but my toes aren't tight. In that bitch, everything's tight in the Shimas. Everything's tight. But if you want a pair of Shimas, if you, uh, if you skate and you want a pair of Shimas, I'll sell them to you. Otherwise, I got to sell them, uh, put them up on eBay or return them. Because it'll, be it'll be a great hold, but I can't hold. I got, I got like 10 investments going on right now. I got like my money tied up in too much other shit. Uh, they didn't do a wide release. Foot Locker had 1,200 pairs. 1,200 pairs of what? You be the Bayou Boys or something different? Did I miss a combo? I bet you they were manufacturing issues due to COVID, so they don't have what they needed for the normal mid outsoles. I don't know. I love conspiracy theories. Brian Jackson. That's what I'm saying, bro. I don't know for sure, but I'm just asking questions. And the questions I'm ask, asking, I feel like are legit. Like, I feel like everything, I'm not coming from a super conspiracy lane that's like way out of the you know out of the realm of possibility i'm coming here with good questions like what happened why the different pricing why the change why the switch up on material why the switch up on the outsole yeah questions we got questions they didn't uh yeah they didn't do a wide release of what i don't know hmm T, are you trying for the Balvins? Of course I'm trying for the Balvins. Well, not to not to keep, even though actually that's a shoe like it's wild as hell, but I could totally pull it off. I saw uh who the fuck did I see the other day do it? I saw Seth Fowler doing a review and he wasn't like crapping on the shoe. He was just kind of it was just not his style, way too wild. Like, and I was just like looking, yeah, you know, I was like, yeah, no shit, Seth. I could never see you wearing that shoe and making it look, you know, it's just not his style. But for me, Fire ass fit, popping colors. I think I could pull it off. I don't love the shoe. I think it's, you know, I like the brightness to it. Um, I'm not a fan of canvas. Canvas material. Funny story. <laughs> I had an ex girlfriend back in the way back in the day buy me a pair of canvas Jordan ones for my birthday. Royals, nonetheless. You guys know me. What's my least favorite Jordan one of all time? Royal blue, Royals. I don't like Royal. I don't like the Royal toes. I'm not a Royal guy. She buys me the Royal canvas Jordan ones. What were the, the she buys the, were those uh, AJKOs, bro? That's what they were called. The Air Jordan one knockouts. The AJKO canvas joints. And I'm sure she thought she was killing it. Birthday gift, just crushing. Terrible. Terrible shoe. Awful. Awful shoe. Just, yeah. Not good in so many ways. But that's what it reminds me of, that J Balvin. Uh, get that canvas material, just, I don't love, I don't like it. I don't like the Air Jordan 1 knockout. I don't like those Air Force 1s that they did on canvas. I just don't like that material. Just not, not good. 
John King, got to come to Florida with them joints. Exactly, bro. You go down to Miami with the J Balvins? <whistles> Mentirosa. Figured you'd give them a history lesson. A history lesson. That's in the box I sent. Oh, gotcha. You got, fool, I'm not opening the box, guy. The Dow Pal Antonio loves opening packages. I can't do that to him a day after his birthday. It's too much. Two days after his birthday. It's too much. Dow Pal Antonio's birthday was on Wednesday. If you didn't wish him a happy birthday, I don't know what you're doing. Are you really a fan? Do you like the show? Who else is going for the easy breads tomorrow? A lot of you guys not have that shoe and really want it, or some of you guys have it and still want it again, or doesn't it feel like Adidas is on its last leg with this shit? Like they're reaching, bro. Reaching hard. Doesn't it sound like, doesn't it feel like that? Sorry, not sound like that. Doesn't it feel like Adidas is just reaching so hard? What about the, the two new 4Ds they dropped too? Let me see this. Or the Philly mayor was sending me some shit this morning. We were talking about it. How, the tea times, you guys know what the tea time, the SNS tea time, social status, whatever. It's kind of like a light green hue. So it matches the 4D. Have you guys seen those? Just in case you haven't. Give you guys a couple. Let me show you what's up here. Dude, this is a... Uh... Oh, shit. Adidas, it's it's late, bro. Like it's all this is all the stuff we wanted a long time ago. Look at these, these tea time S and S is all green, and then probably the dopest Ultra Boost upper as far as materials, look, color. Like I just think this upper is so fire, and look what they do. They just ruin it and give it to a 4D. This is the best Ultra Boost upper they've come out with, and I can't even tell you how long. The suede cage, bro. The nice quality, the dope prime knit. Like, is this not an ill ass fall ultra boost? Like, and then they do this to it. They just throw it on a 4D and try to force it down your throat. So I'll be out. But I, if it was an ultra boost, I'd, I'd be copying for sure. If that was on an ultra boost, man, that upper is just dope to me. I love the upper. What I don't love is the 4D midsole. And I told you guys about that. 4D, I'll probably never cop because it's. The same thing I already have with least comfort. Why would I want the same upper with least comfort? I'll just buy an Ultra Boost. And it's it's not going to make me, you're not going to give me an upper that I love like this and put it on 4D. I'm not. I'm never going to love it enough to, to do 4D. I'm just not. So I'll just sit without these. But if they were an Ultra Boost, I'd be going. I'd be rocking. So yeah, they're coming out with all these 4Ds now. The tea times, these joints, the, I thought there was another pair too. Anyway, doesn't matter. But yeah, that's my feeling on those. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Not really, uh, 4D ain't really the move for me. The breads, gosh, I haven't gone for an Adidas release. That Yeezy waiting room is always a nightmare. It's always a mess. Yeezy supply is a mess. I don't know. I don't know, man. I have no idea. Black Prez, bro, in all caps. I got this playing on my computer in the background on full screen. Thought my ass just got hacked when I walked out the bathroom and saw the mouse was scrolling the internet by itself. LMAO. <laughs> I like that. Nah, it's just me, bro. Don't worry. Just me trying to put some stuff up on the screen for you. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go eat some lunch, man. I'm hungry as shit. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Thank you for the super chat donation. My man, uh, who the hell was that earlier? Way back in the back. I think it was, um, man, was it uh, Romsey? Romsey, thank you, bro. Let me shoot a shot for you. Oh, it's not. Let's get the cam going. Stringer, nice. Is that shit still showing the hoop? The hoop's crooked, but it doesn't matter. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh. Uh. Oh, no, I gave myself the, I gave myself the, bad, the bad sound, and it was straight money. Straight fire. Dylon, 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 and Dylon. Okay? And on that note, appreciate you guys sliding through, man. I love the shit out of you guys. I think that will be back on Monday. We'll open up the rest of these packages. And uh, 
we'll continue to move forward as we always do. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Take those heaters to the bank. Actually, don't take those heaters to the bank this week. I don't know what's going to happen. But I said that last week and we went 5-0. and Take those heaters to the bank. I like that. Uh, the Jets, I'm a little nervous. Jets plus 9.5. Uncle Jim said it possibly upsetting. The Washington football team against the Steelers. Gosh, I feel like the Washington football team can stop the run. Steelers can't run. That makes me a little nervous. But uh, when I'm a little nervous about it, we're probably going to kill it. Probably going to crush it. If I'm like, if I was leaning like, eh, maybe Washington, probably going to kill the Steelers. So take those heaters to the bank. We'll be crushing it. And uh, we'll see you fools uh, next week on Monday. Thanks for, thanks for sliding through.